Call tonight's council meeting to order. Roll call, please. Council members Knudsen? Here. Blitz? Here. Staggers? Present. Anderson? Here. Benega? Here. Brown? Here. Costello? Here. Jameson? Here. Quorum present for a nice meeting. We'll be led in the uh, invocation tonight by Pastor Bill Kennan from Linwood Wesleyan Church in Sioux Falls. And after the invocation, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. So I'd ask everyone to please rise. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful tonight that you have a divine agenda. And we're doing our very best here to have our agendas fit your agenda. And you've told us in your words that man makes his plans, but you ordain his footsteps. And so here tonight we yield to you, and I ask that you would bless these officials, that you would bless those who are here to make discussion and present things, and we pray that your will would ultimately be accomplished and that you would bless this beautiful city of Sioux Falls. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. isn't uh, working, so we'll go this way with that. What we'd like to do tonight, we'd like to invite uh, Mr. and Mrs. Hinks up. Tonight we have a award we'd like to give them, so Don wants to come up. Don wants to present them on their, for their generosity that they had, so. Thank you, Mayor. As most of you probably know, we opened uh, Legacy Park, which is located uh, just uh, south of West 12th Street along Skunk Creek. And that park development was made possible due to the generosity of the Bill Hanks family. And as a sign of our appreciation uh, to Bill and his family, we have a certificate of appreciation uh, for their donation of land. And I'd like to read the certificate of appreciation. It says, Sioux Falls Parks and Recreation Board, Certificate of Appreciation, presented to William H. Hanks for generously donating 15.4 acres of land for the development of Legacy Park in Sioux Falls. Awarded on this 21st day of September 2009, and it is signed by Mayor Dave Munson and Kevin Nyber, uh, who is our president of our Parks and Recreation Board. So with that, I'd like to congratulate Bill and his family on the generous donation for Legacy Park. Also, Sean Irvine, that uh, the chair of the City of Sioux Falls Board of Historic Preservation, I would invite Sean if you here tonight. <coughs> we have. Some awards we'd like to present for the historical preservation. Stacy Newcomb Wyland, we'd like to present you, Stacy, with an award for her unwavering dedication to the preservation in Sioux Falls, including her involvement in several preservation projects and serving on the Sioux Falls Historic Preservation Board. We really want to thank you for all you really do. Here's one. I, I hope that uh, I don't know if the picture's out there, but the picture of the house that we that Jesse Casper really did on the uh, renovation exterior of his home at 707 South 
Lake Avenue really has restored that house to uh, the historical uh, significance of what it was, so I'd, we'd like to present him with, with one as well. And then the one, the Museum of Visual Materials that we have in Sioux Falls is going to be represented by board member Stacy McMahon for the restoration and reuse of the former consolidated tank line building at 5th Street in Maine. And all of us, many of us, have had an opportunity to see that and what a, a great addition that is to the city of Sioux Falls. And we want to thank them and present them with an award as well. Did Chris and uh, Chris Hangman, uh, I don't know if they got here tonight. They, okay, they didn't keep come for the preservation uh, of the former fire station that we have in 22nd and Minnesota of the restoration that he did on that. We want to recognize him for his work on that. So with that, uh, it really shows that these people have a commitment to keeping Sioux Falls the historical significant city that we all enjoy living. So I want to congratulate him again and thank him. Started. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I so move Knutson. Knutson moves. Is there a second? Second, Benninga. Benninga seconds. Further motions on the consent agenda? Not. All in favor approve the consent agenda? Vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council members Knutson? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present have voted. The consent agenda has been approved 8 0. Is there a motion to approve the regular agenda? So move, Anderson. Anderson moves. Is there a second? Second, Jameson. Jameson second. Are there further motions for the regular agenda? I see then. So all in favor of the motion to approve the regular agenda, vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present have voted. The regular agenda has been approved 8 0. Uh, this is a time that we set aside a period of five minutes for anyone wishing to address the council, and we just ask that they just give their names. And so anyone wishing to address the council, we'd ask them to come forward at this time. Okay. Is this for a special assessment for free? No, that will okay. be coming up, okay. so if you want to wait, okay. thank you. Anyone that wishes to address the council for a, a five-minute period for public input? <coughs> Ernie Bay, I'd just like to address the council on a problem I have with a bill from the city. For Is it for on tonight's agenda at all, or is this outside of the agenda tonight? I'm not sure what the agenda is, sir. Uh, what, what's your, what, what's your bill? Snow removal. I think that's coming up, so, so that you're, you'll be coming up here when we get to the snow removal, so if you want to wait, that would be Thank fine. You. Thanks, Bernie. Others that wish to address the council for a period of five minutes, public input, if, if, you're gonna, if it's on the agenda, we will get to you at that time. Uh, seeing no one come forward for public input, we will move into the regular agenda, item number eight. Item number H is a new 2009-2010 package malt beverage license for Maketh Gak Sudanese General Store to be operated at 623 West 11th Street. Item 9 is a transfer of a 2009 retail liquor license from Sioux Falls Catering Company Incorporated, Holiday Inn City Center, 100 West 8th Street to SFLL LLC City Center Lounge to be operated at 100 West 8th Street, including Sunday sales and video lottery terminals. Full service restaurant, conditional use permit not required. Item 10 is a special one day liquor license request for SMG to be operated at the Sioux Falls Arena, 1201 Northwest Avenue on October 23, 2009, for the Timberwolves preseason game, March 30, 2010, for the Central Plains Dairy Expo, all 2009 2010 home season games for the Stampede, 
all 2009-2010 home season games for the Sky Force, including Stampede and Sky Force possible playoff games between April 3rd and May 15th, 2010. Special one-day liquor license, I'm sorry, item 11. Special one-day liquor license request for Washington Pavilion Management Incorporated, Washington Pavilion of Arts and Science, 301 South Main Avenue for September 26th, October 3rd, and October 25th, 2009, and January 2nd, July 10th, and July 16th, 2010 for wedding receptions. Item 12 is a special one-day liquor license request for Great Bear Recreational Park, Incorporated Great Bear Recreational Park to be operated at 5901 East Rice Street, on October 8, 2009, for the Children's Home Society event. Item 13 is a special one-day off-sale package liquor license for the Alzheimer's Association to be operated at the Sioux Falls Convention Center, 1211 Northwest Avenue, on October 16th to the 17th, 2009, for the Expo for Her. Item 14 is a special one-day malt beverage, special one-day wine, and special one-day off-sale package wine licenses for downtown Sioux Falls to be operated on 2nd Avenue between 10th and 11th Streets including the public right-of-way except the pedestrian walkways on September 26, 2009 for the Harvest Fest. Item 15 is a special one-day wine license for Zai Alpha Lambda to be operated at the Center for Active Generations, 2300 West 46th Street on April 10, 2010 for a sorority event. Item 16 is a special one-day malt beverage and special one-day wine licenses for Sioux Falls Men's Slow Pitch to be operated at the 13th Street Lot, 113 East 13th Street, and at the 1st Avenue Lot, 400 South 1st Avenue, on September 27, 2009, for the Downtown Jam, pending submittal and approval of site plans per Sioux Falls Fire Rescue. Thank you, Tamara. Thank you. Lori Hogstead with the City Attorney's Office, representing items 8 through 16. I do know that we have a request from a neighboring business to speak on item 8. Um, and this would be for the request is for a package malt beverage license uh, to be issued to Macath Gack for the Sudanese General Store, address 623 West 11th Street. Um, and this would be a grocery store with package beer sales as an accessory to the grocery store. Um, the applicant is here to address this, as well as the neighboring business from Mercado. And we also have Chief Barthel here that can address concerns. Would you like to hear from the chief first, or how would you like to start? Amy, would you like to hear from the applicant? Or? Have chief. the applicant explain what he's doing? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> sure. Macketh, if you could come up. Okay, my name is Kath Gak, and uh, my business is going to be mostly grocery store with uh, some little bit of basic beer that I will be selling alongside the grocery food store. And it is located at West 11, 20, 623 West 11th Street. Questions? No, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Others thank you. that wish to address the council on item number eight? Uh, my name is Balai. Uh, I almost five years. Uh, I am running. Okay, I have a liquor license, and I am the owner of Mercato Convenience Store, a, a liquor store. And really, uh, these times, uh, you give me to speak my mind uh, and to put some points forward to you. I am very happy. Uh, my point is. Uh, the Sudanese store, the gentleman came here to get the applied for liquor store. Uh, that would be the next, just the next door of my store. So I don't know how you guys see this. Uh, it, I see in different way because uh, the law said, the law said we don't have to sell uh, alcohol for age under 21 and there is another saying also we don't have to sell alcohol for intoxicated drunkards also when you give license just one door to another one after the next door 
how can even the legal field, the policies can s separate to see this drunker man came out from this door or from that door? And how can we manage the alcohol business, I mean, in this distance very near, almost zero distance situation? That is the problem I see ahead and it is hard even not only for me, even the next one, to handle the customers and to do peacefully the workers. And another thing, free market, it doesn't mean just you copy your neighbors or your goal is supposed to be to do a good service to the neighborhood and to get benefit for yourself also. Just you see that your neighbor, what he has, maybe he's struggling and you want to be the part of the struggle. That's not free market or the good vision of new starting business. There is a million items, a million items that's better, a million items of business, anybody can do it. So in my feeling, really, it is irresponsible act to give a license just in zero distance atmosphere. That's one. Second, you, you should have to put even a, a minimum distance for alcohol sales, for next people even, because it is very hard to manage the job. That is what I want to tell you, your gentlemen, also. Another point what uh, I want to tell is for the gentleman, I just told with them when they came to rent that places, what you're going to do it. If you like to be just like the same me, I say to them, I give you. Just take, let us negotiate. You do it, I'm going to create another business. Because liquor stores together in my life, I have never seen in America or any other world together, they work one side to the another. It does work. The profit margin is very small. And the city in that area already dismantled a lot of residents. The customers' numbers go down. Mathematically, it does work. I, I, as if, I, I, I want to explain just like as a business view of points also. So to direct, you are the ruler. You, to direct the businesses in the right direction is your responsibility also. Tomorrow, now I am a self-employed person. Tomorrow, I'm going to be unemployed. I will be on your shoulder with my family also. Thank you. Questions? Thank you very much. Just to clarify one item, um, Mr. Belay has packaged liquor. He has a full liquor license, and the request is for packaged beer. So it would just be malt beverages only, just to clarify that. A little bit different. Okay, thank you. Others that wish to address the council on item number eight, come forward, give your name, please. My name is Nick Clausen. I live at 2904 South Gibson Avenue. And I own several properties in the Pettigrew uh, addition, mainly apartments, and particularly 631 West 11th, which is right next door. I rent to Beli. Uh, which is a convenience store that sells beer and liquor, uh, and among other things. My building and the Sudanese store are literally right next to each other. You could reach through the wall and go right to the next uh, building. Uh, if this license is issued, we'll have three stores that sell liquor and beer within a half a block of each other's. Uh, it would be Munchies, Mercado, and then the Sudanese store. Uh, the problem that I have is I own a laundromat in the building uh, at 631 uh, West 11th, and I'm constantly struggling with alcoholics that are looking for a place to drink beer and pass out. Uh, we don't need another liquor store. Uh, Beli and myself have been working on the loitering and panhandling around our building, trying to clean up the, the area, and we're just starting to get a handle on it. Uh, wanted it to be just one more place for uh, these people to hang out where... I can't get rid of them because it's not my property. Uh, if there isn't something already in place uh, to space these types of businesses out just a little, uh, there should be. If there's nothing, then we should at least consider the neighborhood and the revitalization that the city is working on. Adding this license would not move the neighborhood or the Pettigrew addition in the direction the city or myself are envisioning. Uh, please do not put another liquor store in my neighborhood. Thank you. Questions? 
Thank you very much. Others that wish to address the council, come forward, give your name, please. Yes, my name is uh, <clears throat> Dan Lee. I run Pettigrew Heights Neighborhood Outreach. For the last three years, I have been doing extensive ministry and other out community development efforts in Pettigrew Heights. And uh, I just have to say that a, a great deal of our efforts are wasted on people who are alcoholics, panhandling, looking for handouts, and just looking for a place to pass out drunk. We have, he mentions, three uh, different stores that are selling. There are also two bars within that half block radius. And uh, there's just an enormity in that one small stretch of availability of alcohol for people to walk up, drink it, and pass out on the streets, which just causes an overburdens of problems that our kids are witnessing and our kids are absorbing. And uh, I'm afraid if this continues in Pettigrew Heights, it's our kids who will suffer and become alcoholics because they see what is most common and what is in their face every day. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Others that wish to address the council on item number eight? Good evening, Doug Bartell, Police Chief. Uh, I was asked to just give a brief synopsis of the number of police calls and concerns that we've had in that area. As you know, that entire neighborhood's been part of our revitalization project, and we've been working on it quite extensively for the last several years. So I looked at the last five years, and I didn't, we didn't necessarily look at just that one block area. I looked at from 10th to 15th in Minnesota to Grange Avenue. And um, actually, the total number of calls uh, has, has gone down a little bit, but not, not considerably. But when I look at mainly assaults and, and liquor violations, those sort of things, uh, we have seen the number of fights and assault calls go down. So that's a good sign. Um, whether or not adding another place that sells alcohol is, or is going to cause those numbers to go up or down, that, that's, that's hard for me to say. I, I know we haven't had any issues with, with this particular applicant, so it's hard to predict what the future might hold. Uh, uh, I will give my thoughts, though. I would, you know, obviously any place that, that I think by adding that to, to a neighborhood where we've already done uh, so much extensive work in trying to clean things up by having another place where people can loiter and and purchase alcohol, I, uh, I have concerns with that. And uh, frankly, though, if you want to get alcohol, whether you get it next door or at this place, you're going to get it either way. So certainly a decision that, that's up to the council. But uh, just our, our thoughts on it. Obviously, we would just soon not see any alcohol being sold anywhere in that area, but, uh, but certainly there is. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. Or questions of Doug? No, thank you. Thanks. Others? Uh, does the council, do you, guys, do you want to take that item or do you want to take them all at one time or do you want to break that one out and take just item eight? Go ahead. I think we should take this item alone as long as okay. we're, we're on the discussion. Do you want to take that action now or? Yeah, we can, we, we can make a motion. Do you want to make a motion? Sure, we'll make a motion to uh, take item eight separately. Second, let's. Well, yeah, we, I don't think we can just do that, but if you, you want to. Move for, uh, move for approval, then one through. Of item number eight. Um, could I add to that, Greg? Sure. Could item 16 also be separated? Um, what we're doing now is we, we, can, we can do it as we come. We're just going to okay. take we're going to take eight separately, and then we'll, we'll take the other one. So we've got a motion to. You, your motion was to approve item eight, or no? Oh, it wasn't okay. Then, <laughs> then we, we can just take it. We can just take it. We don't have to have a motion. So other discussion on item eight, we're going to take that separately now. Everybody understands that, so we don't need a motion for that. Because we can take them all individually, take them as a package. I have a question for Lori. Lori, can you give me some idea on what percentage of uh, Mr. Gock's uh, general store will be uh, dedicated towards packaged liquor sales? I cannot, but we can certainly call him back up and ask him that. Okay. Should we? If you would, please. Would you? Okay. Smackers, can you come back up? Oh, 
Thank you. I don't have an exact number, but uh, if I were to estimate, I would be talking about 30%, 20%, but I don't have an exact figure because I haven't bought anything yet. You're suggesting 20 to 30%? Yeah, if I were to estimate because I don't have exact facts on that one. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion? Laurie, I think this, this question comes down to undue concentration of of liquor establishments. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have any other examples in the city that we're uh, operating at this kind of capacity in such a small area? Well, you know that the undue concentration comes up more in lines with the conditional use permits. You know that's something that they look at. As far as the alcohol licensing, we generally don't look at the undue concentration, but we look at the character of the applicant and the suitability of the location. And, you know, you certainly could use suitability of location in determining if there are too many in one area. Well, I, I don't have a question for Lori, but I guess uh, just a couple of thoughts. Is one, I listened very carefully to the, the testimony, of course, and I, um, however, as a city councilor, I really do still feel like that we have a free market enterprise system, and, and so the fact that, you know, they're that close together is just uh, serious competition, uh, I'm afraid, but, um, and of course my preference would be that not one of those uh, three establishments sold alcohol at all. Um, but putting those thoughts aside, I guess I really feel like as a city councilor, I mean, when they, when the business meets, the, the applicant meets the criteria that we have on the books right now, as a city councilor, I do not feel like that I can be arbitrary and capricious and think, no, let's see, two is enough, no, three, no, three and a half businesses. I mean, legally, I feel like that I need to approve this. And so I will be voting to approve it for that very reason. Further comments? Okay. Uh, after uh, seeing this in my email and also seeing a letter from Marvin Hafner, who has been a resident of that building, I think, since it was actually put up, I uh, took the time to go and talk to him and got a, quite an earful from not only Marvin but uh, several of the members of the community that lived in that area. And their concerns, I think, also have to be respected of the panhandling, the loitering that's going around there, and, uh, you know, their, their issues with their own safety. And I, I feel that alcohol in this area an area that we've been trying to clean up, uh, this is not a positive move in that neighborhood. So I'm not going to support this. And Councilor Anderson, again, not in an argumentative way at all, but I just, um, and really respect your feelings on this, but I mean, I do not, I mean, we can, you know, people can buy alcohol at grocery stores, so I still believe if people want to get alcohol, they'll get it, unfortunately. We have more than enough alcohol abuse in our community and elsewhere. Um, and again, I, I still feel like legally we need to uh, follow the uh, rules that are on the books. And with all respect on that, if I can reply, um, I understand that too. And uh, but we also look at video lottery bars. We you know different type of businesses that are alcohol, and we are constraining them at this time also. So once again, it's it's a distribution of alcohol that we should look at and the area and make sure that we're taking care of our neighborhoods too. So, thank you. As, as far as the video lottery, we have an ordinance in place that we have to follow for distancing requirements, which is why we do look at that. As far as just an ap alcohol application without video lottery, which this one would not even be eligible, um, the two criteria again would be suitability of applicant and suitability of location. Yes, uh, in regard to this issue, I guess I'm a little concerned here about picking winners and losers. For example, we've already picked King's Casino to be a winner. We've already picked Munchies to be a winner, Mercado to be a winner, Lucky Lady Casino to be a winner, La Costanera Mexican Store to be a winner. But now we're coming down to this uh, individual and we're going to say, you're going to be a loser. And I don't think that's appropriate. I feel very uncomfortable that we're going to be We've already picked some winners, and now we're going to say this individual is a loser. Go ahead. Lori, I just need to clarify, mm -hmm. uh, this is a grocery store? 
Yes, a grocery store. How big a store? How, How big? A, it's not a convenience store, but well, it's a true grocery uh, store. We'll have to ask him. Mackis, <laughs> once more. <coughs> It's about a thousand, a thousand square foot. A thousand square feet. Um, is it in primarily food or groceries? What would you say? Primary groceries. Groceries. No serving food outside. Specializing in your uh, Sudanese Right, mostly types. imported foods. Mostly imported, imported food. Mostly. Just, Lori, this seems like a natural use for a grocery store to have a, uh, the opportunity to sell beer. Is that doesn't seem unreasonable, does it? No, I, we have every other grocery store in Sioux Falls does sell alcohol, whether it's beer or now more and more of them are, are the complete liquor. That's correct. And was the grocery st how, how long has the grocery store been there? How long has it been there? Approximately two months. Two months. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Further comments? Lori, can you remind us what the building use was before this gentleman took it over? I'm not actually sure what it was before he took it over. I don't know if his... Mackett, do you know what it was before? Maybe you should just stay up here. <laughs> <laughs> you just sit right there next time. <laughs> Know what it was before? Yes, the premise it used to be a, like a Sudanese coffee shop. People used to eat coffee shop. Okay. By coffee shop, people drink coffee there. Thank you, and my apologies for running you back and forth. Did you just sit there? <laughs> <laughs> We're done. Thank you. Okay. I move for uh, approval of item number eight, uh, Knutson. Knutson moves. Is there a second to that motion? Second, Jameson. Jameson. Jameson seconds. The motion to approve item eight only. So, further discussion, item eight. Not. Is uh, all in favor of approving item eight will vote yes. Those opposed will vote no. Councilmember Knudsen? Yes. Litz? No. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? No. Veniga? Yes. Brown? No. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Passes five to three. That motion has prevailed five yes and three no. So item eight has been approved. Um, now, is there any questions? Let's go list 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Is there any questions that anybody has on those? Or would you like to take those all in one vote? Or does anybody have? If you're comfortable taking items, we'll take items 9 through 14 with one vote. I move for approval of items number 9 through 14, Knutson. Knutson moves. Is there a second? Second. Let's. Let's second. Uh, go ahead. Just looking at that again now. Let's see here. Okay, nope, that's fine. Okay, we're going to take 9 through 14, and the motion made and seconded to approve those items. All in favor of the motion to approve those items, 9 through 14, will vote yes, those opposed no. Council Members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Veniga? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present have voted. Item 15 will be noted that uh, Council Member Benningham will be excused from item number 15. Is there further discussion on item number 15? Not. Is there a motion? Move, Move to approve. Brown. Brown moves. Is there a second? Second, Jameson. Jameson, second. Further comments on the motion to approve item number 15? Seeing and all in favor of that motion, vote yes. So suppose no. Council Members Knudsen? Yes. Plitz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. That motion prevails. Seven yes, one excused. Item 15 has been approved. Item 16. Move for approval. Jameson, Jameson moves for, to approve item 16. Is there a second? I'll second that. Knudsen? Knudsen seconds. Further comments on item, item 16? Kenny, we have to do both Kenny's, you'll be that Council Member Anderson is excused from item 16. So no further mo no mo further discussion. All in favor will vote yes. Those opposed no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. That motion has been approved. Seven yes, one excuse. Now we're at item 17. Item 17 is deferred action from the September 8, 2009 meeting. Second reading. 
an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, providing appropriations and the means of financing for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2010. Tom Huber with the City Finance Department. This ordinance appropriates the governmental fund portion of the budget that was adopted last week. Total appropriations of $213,148,981. Questions of Tom? Yes. Yeah, Tom, I have a question on Exhibit A. Uh, just to clarify, I think I know what the answer is, but I just want to make sure about Exhibit A when we have the taxes. You have the column dealing with general fund, general fund taxes, $95,916,594. Um, in that general fund, is, is that the first penny sales tax and also the property tax? That is correct. Okay. And then, once again, just to clarify, the second column, sales use tax fund, that's the second penny. Now. That's the second penny okay. sales tax. Thank you. Further questions? Others that wish to address the council on item number... 17. I move for approval of item number 17, <coughs> Knutson. Knutson moves. Is there a second? Second, let's. Let's second. Further comments on the motion <coughs> to approve? Go ahead. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I have an amendment. Okay. Um, I move to amend the ordinance by deleting the last paragraph and inserting the following. Here's the insertion. In accordance, in accordance with SDCL 9-21-19 and SDCL 10-13-35, the finance director is directed to certify the maximum property tax allowed by law, which will not include the property tax increase of 3% CPI <laughs> amount of $1,221,036. The estimated amount is $41,711,730 of tax levies in this ordinance to the Minnehaha and Lincoln County auditors. Okay, that's a motion. Has it been seconded? That motion dies for lack of a second. Further comments? Um, unfortunately, you know, uh, the city council uh, is going to allow for this property tax increase. However, in order to provide greater transparency to the public, I move to amend the title of the ordinance by adding on the second line after the word financing the following phrase, quote, to include a 3% property tax increase. That, that's your motion then? Yes, okay. it is. Okay. So second that motion? That motion dies for lack of a second. So we're back to the main motion that was made and seconded. Further comments? Not? Go ahead. Well, um, this evening it, it seems like we're going to be like the U.S. Congress because oftentimes what happens in the U.S. Congress, you have a bill uh, that's introduced and uh, a lot of good provisions in the bill. And then what happens, you start having people adding stuff to it and adding stuff to it, and then it makes it more difficult for a senator or House member to actually vote for the bill. You're in a real bind. <coughs> there's good in the bill, and then there's not, there are items in the bill that are not good. And that's the same way with this appropriations bill. There is worthwhile spending in this appropriations bill. However, there is some wasteful spending in this appro appropriations bill plus the fact we do have a property tax increase of 3% for next year. And also, we also lack the transparency in the title to make it very clear to the people, if they're just looking at titles of ordinances, that there's a property tax increase here. So this is a real dilemma. There is good and there's bad with the appropriations bill. However, uh, I guess when it comes to the final vote here for this appropriations bill um, for 2010, um, I will be voting for it with some reluctance. Thank you. Further comments? The motion been made and seconded. Seeing none, all in favor of approving item 17, vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present have voted. Item 17 has been approved. Eight. Zero. Item 18. Item 18 is a second reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, approving the release of a portion of the permanent utility easement in Lot 3, Block 2, Westwood Valley Edition, Minnehaha County. Good evening. Chad Hebe with the Engineering Division of Public Works. This utility easement is located west of Ellis Road 
between 26th Street and 32nd Street. This property is in the process of being developed and it has been determined that the easement is no longer needed. The property owner is requesting the easement be released. Engineering recommends approval. Questions of Chad on item number 18. Others that wish to address the council on item number 18? Is there a motion to approve? So, so move, Costello. Costello moves. Is there a second? Second. Let's. Let's seconds. Further comments on that motion? Seeing it, all in favor of the motion approved by item 18, vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present have voted. Item 18 has been approved 8 0. Item 19. Item 19 is a second reading an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, declaring certain real property of the city surplus and authorizing the disposition thereof. This 1.9 acre parcel is on the west side of Cliff Avenue, just south of Amadon Street. Originally, this parcel was purchased by the South Dakota Department of Transportation in fee title with no reversionary rights. In October of 2008, the South Dakota Department of Transportation conveyed and quit claimed this parcel to the city of Sioux Falls. In August of 2009, the city council vacated this right away at the request of the adjacent property owner to the west. With no reversionary rights, the property is now owned by the city of Sioux Falls. The appraised value of this property is $49,600 and is zoned industrial. This ordinance will declare this property surplus and allow us to dispose of it. Questions, Mr. Chad. I item 19. Others that wish to address the council on item number 19? Is there a motion to approve? So move, Anderson. Anderson moves. Is there a second? Second, Benninger. Benninger seconds. Further comments on the motion to approve item 19? Seeing none, all in favor? Vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present have voted. Item 19 has been approved 8 0. Item 20. Item 20 is a first reading an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, a major amendment, petition number 2009 to Chapter 15.45.070, Plan Development Districts, at the southeast corner of I-29 and I-90, allowing changes in land use as reflected in the revised sub-area regulations and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. The Planning Commission recommends approval. Mike Cooper, Planning and Building Services. Tonight we have first reading on four items that were uh, considered by the Planning Commission at their last monthly meeting. <laughs> this item is known as the Redstone Village Plan Development District. And this goes back to about 1997 when this area was first uh, zoned for future redevelopment. And then uh, subsequent to that, in about 2003, there were changes made to the land use plan. Uh, since 2003, the developers have been working on financing for this project. Uh, there is a motel out in that area, and this is just north of the Flying J truck stop. The purpose of the amendment for tonight is based on an idea to realign the roadway network that would extend through this property. Uh, the developers have been working with their engineers and the desire is to move the east-west access road farther to the south, which is shown on this exhibit. So by doing that, it changes the boundaries of the different land uses that have been approved for this property. The land uses themselves are not changing. It would still allow retail office and personal services, commercial recreation, and then institutional along with multifamily residential. And it wraps around the north and the west sides of the Skyline Heights rural residential area. <coughs> the applicant has had neighborhood meetings with the Skyline Heights property owners as well as the Flying J truck stop. And as at this point, we have not heard of any negative comments about this proposed amendment. So again, it doesn't necessarily change the previously allowed land uses, but it changes the boundary lines based on the realignment of the major east-west street that would extend through this development. Questions of Mike and item number 20? Let's go to 21. Item 21 is the first reading. An ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property at West Benson Road and South Westport Avenue from the AG Agricultural District to the RC Recreation Conservation District, petition number 2009 0807. 
and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. The Planning Commission recommends approval. This is the property that was donated to the City of Sioux Falls by Sanford Health for the development of a junior football complex and associated parking. We're just zoning it for the recreation, conservation, future use. Questions of Mike and item number 21? Let's go to 22. Item 22 is a first reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property at West Benson Road and South Westport Avenue from the AG Agricultural District to the Sanford Sports Complex Plan Development District, petition number 2009-0808, and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. The Planning Commission recommends approval. This is the uh, balance of land that Sanford Health continues to own directly adjacent to the junior football complex. It is just over 99 acres of land area. And the zoning that's being considered for approval would divide it up into three areas that would include locations for future medical, additional sports facilities, as well as office and some multifamily residential development. Question. Go ahead, Gary. Yeah, it's, um, it's actually with the previous one, uh, the rezoning. Um, Item number 21 is actually the junior football fields, is that right? Yeah, that, item 21 was just the portion that the city yeah. now owns. And then I, I guess I was wondering, it says owner, Sanford Health. I thought we own this now, so why is Sanford Health? On item 21? 21, yeah. It should be City of Sioux Falls. I think when we originally did the staff report, the transfer was oh, still in progress. Okay, okay thank you. Mm -hmm. Questions, Mike, on item 22? Let's go to 23. Item 23 is a first reading and ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property at the southeast corner of South Cliff Avenue and East 69th Street from the AG Agricultural District to the Shadow Creek Plan Development District, petition number 2009-0813, and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. The Planning Commission recommends approval. This property is located to the south and east of the existing University of Sioux Falls athletic facility. This is about 14 acres of land that they are acquiring for future potential expansion of their complex. And we're just expanding the zoning to include this into their existing development area. Questions of Mike on item number 23. Not, is there a motion to set the hearing date for items 20 through 23 for October 5th? So moved, Benninger. Benninger moved. Second, Costello. Costello seconds. Further discussion on setting the hearing date for October 5th? For items 20 through 23, seeing none, all in favor setting that hearing date, vote yes, those opposed no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jamison? Yes. All members present have voted. The hearing date has been set for October 5th for items 20 through 23, 80, item 24. Item 24 is a resolution vacating South Cambridge Avenue from West 41st Street to West 43rd Street. Chad Heavey with engineering. Uh, this right of way is south of 41st Street between Marion Road and Valley View Road and is improved. If the right of way is vacated, a utility easement will be maintained. The petition was submitted by Peace Lutheran Church. On your map, the church owns parcels A and B. Parcels C and D are privately owned, but those owners did sign the petition. The church plans to use this vacated right-of-way to expand their parking lot and for possible future building expansions. Neighborhood meetings were held on August 20th and September 10th. Neighborhood concerns included traffic speeds and volumes on 43rd Street and the proposed site layout. Engineering conducted traffic counts and a speed study on 43rd Street and presented this information at the neighborhood meeting on September 10th. The petitioner is present tonight to answer any of your questions, and engineering has no opposition to the right-of-way vacation. Questions of Chad on 24. Others that wish to address the council on item number 24. Council discussion. I move for approval of item number 24, Knutson. Knutson moves. Is there a second? Second, Costello. Costello seconds. Further comments on the motion to approve item 24. I see none, so all in favor vote yes, those opposed no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. All members present voted. Item 24 has been approved 8-0. Item 25. 
Item 25 is a resolution approving the special assessment role for nuisance removal in various areas in the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Mark Cotter with the Office of Public Works. To start off tonight, earlier today we delivered a council memo that addresses a few of the items in this, in the litter section of these assessment roles. The original assessment role that you have, this is item 25 and there's 25 assessment roles, okay? And so as you, as they're categorically separated, one through 25, um, I'm gonna hit a couple of them and then I think we'll ask the clerks to actually um, correct some of the totals. First of all, number 20, number item number three, this property was in the, is in the midst of a sale and transfer when um, after the cleanup work was completed and we submitted the invoice, the property transfer took place. And so we don't think it's responsible to actually levy this assessment on the new owners when the previous owners did it. And so we would request to remove number three and we'll use normal means uh, through uh, sending the previous owner a bill for the work that was done to clean up this property. Is, is that, is that <coughs> 8, uh, 845 South Day? It is, Do you want to withdraw that one? We want to withdraw that one from if this. If you notice that one will be withdrawn. That's right. Okay, go ahead. And then item 7, item 9, item 10, item 11, item 13, and item 21 did have a math error. And so we've corrected that. We've also submitted a new resolution roll. And if the um, I can certainly read the numbers or the clerks can read uh, the corrected math ones. They've all uh, been reduced. Yes. Um, council members, on the sheets that I handed out to you earlier, I divided the sections. <coughs> Item 25A is tree trimming removal. Item 25B is snow removal. Item 25C is snow removal Lincoln County. Item 25, D as in dog, is litter removal, Minnehaha County, and Mr. Carter is referencing D as in dog. The sheets that he distributed earlier to me um, are the blue sheets that I'm going to be reading to you for the amendments. Is that okay? That's fine. That's good. I will need a motion and a second to change the dollar amounts as I read them to you. If I don't read the item number, it means there's no change in the dollar amount. Um, item number seven, on Minnehaha, these are all on Minnehaha County litter removal. Number seven was $811, changed to $641. Item nine was $801, changed to $721. Item 10 was $697, changed to $607. Item 11 was $821, changed to $691. Item 13 was $1,041, changed to $761. Item 21 was $821, changed to $691. And those are the changes for 25D. Um, do you want me to talk about the deferral? Please. So do you know what, what date you want? Uh, October 5th. If I can have a motion and second on the changes that I just read, please. I so move uh, on the um, uh, changes uh, that. We have a motion to approve these, and then we have to go to. So we have a motion to approve the oh. items. Uh, <coughs> was it one through twenty-five? Is that the first one we're taking? Yeah. We're taking. That's going to be the first one, isn't it? We're going to take them. We're going to take them all, are we? Mayor, there's one. There was um, two property owners that. There was a recent death in the family, and they were not able to come tonight. Right. And so there's one more subsequent change right, to this resolution rule. But, but, but to approve, we have to have a motion to approve the rest of them, right? Okay. So we have to have that's a motion correct. to approve, and then, then we take the amendments, can't we? That's correct. So that's how we have to do it. You want a motion a yeah. move to approve to, uh, to the approve. litter cleanups, yeah. the 25 yeah. litter cleanups? Right. Does that work? That, yep. I'll second that motion. Knutson. Ron made the motion. Knutson second. Now we, now we can do the, the, the motions to amend. Okay, and I would like to make a motion to amend to the um, numbers that Tamara just read to us. Okay. Knudsen. Knudsen made the motion to amend. Is there a second to that motion? Second. second. Jameson seconded. 
Motion to amend. Everybody understands the to mayor the numbers that she uh, she read. Let's take that motion. All in favor of approving that motion as amended. Uh, that Tamara read will vote yes. <coughs> Those opposed, no. Council members Knutson? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Vanega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. That motion has been approved 8-0. Okay, now I also have another motion sure. for this same blue section that you're looking at. There's a request for a deferral for items 5, 6, 14, 15, 16, and 17. A request for a deferral to the City Council meeting on October 5th. And I still move uh, for those items to be deferred until that date. Okay. Knudsen. Motion made is a second. Second, Jameson. Jameson seconds. Everyone understands that motion. We're going to defer that uh, because of family issue. All okay. in favor of that motion to approve vote yes, those opposed no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. That motion has been approved 8 0. Further motions, further discussion on the litter cleanup items. Mr. Mayor? Yes. I, I just had a question here, sure. Mark. I was looking at items 19 and 20. And uh, what in the world went on up at 1122 North Duluth? Is there some pictures that we could look at or description? Sure. There is. We can gain them. Just simply page through, but there was an extensive amount of litter to be removed from this property, and um, I'll check my notes, but I think that there was a semi load of material and a subsequent dump truck load of material that came out of this backyard. Um, further questions of Mark? Or? Thank you, Mark. We've got a motion been made and second to approve three dump trucks. That amended. Came on that back. Are there further questions? Well, Mayor speaks. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just still trying to f look through this because we only got this a few minutes before the council meeting here. These corrections, and um, let's see, 11:22 North Duluth. Yeah, I'm trying to find here. Mm -hmm. Do we have the details on that, Mark, as to omit? I do. If you go to Did item number 19, Counselor. 19. Uh, okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and that one did not change from the right. original um, assessment rule. Yes. Um, I think, too, as you um, we can certainly page through some of the cleanups, but this one was extensive in the back and um, yard and certainly poses a significant public health, and um, that was the amount of effort it took to clean this property up. I noticed that you have more than one cleanup date for this one. You have down June 6, 08, uh, then 7, 14, 08, 7, 15, 08. Um, I can understand 714 and 715 being together. What happened 6608? Uh, it's my understanding we've been at this property a number of times, and so this is, there's two actual resolutions that are uh, in your packets tonight with regard to this tonight, item 19 and 20. Okay. And so the first one was uh, three separate cleanup activities. Okay. And then the second one, let's see. Second one happened in, I believe, November, and we were back to the same property cleaning it up. Okay. 
Do we have any after pictures? Yes, toward the bottom. Uh, these are the after pictures. Dave will continue to go through them. That's the backyard. We use this um, <coughs> skid loader in the backyard. Just there was a significant amount of waste back there. You can go up a couple more to show the backyard. That's the backyard that's uh, after the cleanup. Mark, I'm going to guess this is a rental or? I'm not aware if it's a rental property or not, Councilor. Oh, no, it's a home that's owned. Okay. Further questions? Others, anyone else wish to address council on items number one through 25 on litter? We've got a motion been made oh. and seconded to approve as amended. Is there further uh, discussion? You know, once again, I, I haven't had time to, to really look at this, uh, these details on the cleanup. Uh, I just happen to notice here, I'm, like I said, I'm just, I've had this for a short time, but Taking a look at the first one, 219 South Summit, um, we have work being there done on March 18th, 09, from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And we have uh, a supervisor there at $48 per hour. And then we have three service workers at $30 per hour. Um, I don't know. I guess on some of these, I'm wondering, why do we have supervisors there? You just tell them, hey, clean this up and well, the, come back and look. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. The first, um, when we get a notice that the complaints come in, and, and health department facilitates this, and then um, public works actually performs the cleanup activities. Mm -hmm. And for this instance, we, as you can see on all of these, there can be a varying degree. It could be... Um, one small pile or it could be an entire backyard. So the supervisor always goes out first to assess what level of equipment that he needs, comes back, and then um, the follow through, getting this uh, from, uh, from the invoice stage out. And so there is uh, normally at least two hours from the supervisor's standpoint involvement in uh, each cleanup. Further questions? Got the motion been made and seconded. All in. Um, I don't know. Then on 1510 South Cliff, trash bags, 20 bucks. Um, they um, obviously, as we look at it from a manpower standpoint, equipment and supplies, um, the they assess w what level of supplies that they've used to clean up the properties and um, uh, bill accordingly. It's obviously a significant public health issue with not only uh, the adjacent properties, it's the entire neighborhood. And so it's very important to get these properties cleaned up. Well, I, I guess, you know, since I haven't even had time to look at these, uh, I move that we defer this to the next meeting so we can talk about uh, after being more informed. Yes. Yeah, so substitute motion? Yes, it is. It's going to substitute motion to defer until the next meeting is on October 5th. I, I believe that's right. Is there a second of that motion? That motion dies for lack of a second, so we're back to the main motion as amended. All in favor of approving items 1 through 25 on the letter as amended will vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council members, can oh, oh, excuse me. Yeah, excuse if I could just ahead. say something. I, I feel uh, uncomfortable about voting for something I've only had a few minutes to look at. We just got this literally uh, 20, 25 minutes before this meeting. And uh, I mean, I really would prefer to have it de deferred, but since that didn't get a second, I, I'm not going to vote for something I haven't had a time to look at. Okay, thank you. Go ahead with the roll call. Council Member Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? No. Anderson? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. 
All members present voted seven yes, one no. The letter has um, one through 25. Our letter claims has been approved. Uh, out of 26, is that for the list? No, no, no. Oh, Mayor Munson, we have other sections oh, of 25. Okay, go ahead. 25A is we're next. And 25A council is tree trimming removal for Minnehaha County. Don Kearney with Parks and Recreation. Uh, staff are here to answer any questions you might have. So that's item, that's, that's item 349. Uh, item 25A, and there's a total of? It goes from 1 to 49, is that right? Uh, 56. Oh, 56. 56. Yeah, 56. Good questions of Don or his folks on items 25A, items uh, 1 through 56. Go ahead. Yes, Don, I notice all these assessments are a flat $150. Is that right? Um, I believe that's the case. Yeah. Uh, last Monday, uh, during the, uh, uh, when we talked about the budget, the plan for the city, how it's going to spend money next year, I had Amendment C to the budget. And Amendment C was to eliminate this tree trimming inspection program we have and then let the city be responsible for the trees. But there was one thing in my amendment, and these were numbers that I believe the uh, city clerk's office got from the parks department. And that is, for the tree trimming program, expenses is $10,864. Revenue, $19,800. Now, it seems like with those expense and revenue numbers, we're making money off of this program. And we've always been told we don't make money off of this. Can, can you say something about those numbers? Yeah, I, I think I'll defer to Kelby uh, Maris, our operations manager. Oh, okay. Kelby? Good evening, Mayor. Uh, City Council, Kelby Maris, the Parks and Recreation. The, uh, the amendment for the $10,000 is the inspection portion of Project Trim. The tree trimming ordinance would still be in effect. So the trimming process would still happen, but the inspection portion would, no, would not happen with your amendment. And that's the... The $10,800 is what, what it costs us to do the inspection portion of Project Trail. Okay, but we have revenue of $19,800. Right, that is okay. simply, the $10,000 is simply the inspection portion. It's not the trimming portion. Uh -huh. The trimming portion would be above and beyond the $10,000. Trimming the... Uh, Trimming process of the ordinance enforcement of Chapter 42 would happen whether we do project trim or not. We get complaints every year. The, the forestry crew does do tree trimming, ordinance enforcement tree trimming. <coughs> so those costs would be associated with or without project trim. I wanted to eliminate the tree trimming uh, okay, I wanted to eliminate the tree trimming inspection program. This is where we get most people. Uh, <coughs> and uh, I guess I'm still not sure this, this, you said that we would continue still trimming trees and gaining revenue or? Yes, through, do do through the ordinance, okay. it would go back to being complaint based only. So when, when we would receive a complaint, we would follow up to inspect the property for a complaint. If we find it is out of compliance, send a letter to the property owner. If they don't bring it into compliance, then we would. So the city trimming trees would still happen, but it wouldn't happen as project trim. It wouldn't be the proactive approach we're currently using. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That. Other questions? Anyone else in the audience wishing to address the council on the tree trimming and removal for items 1 through 56? Good evening. Uh, my name is Larry Anderson. 
at 27 and 24 South Maywood Drive. I was sent a letter, I received a letter February 26th that my tree out front was uh, out of compliance and that I had till April 26th to uh, bring it into compliance. I at attempted myself to bring it into compliance, compliance and uh, apparently I misunderstood some of the heights and uh, they billed me $150 on May 29th. I understood their reasoning and so forth, but then on June 15th, they did another uh, inspection and said I was out of compliance after the forestry had come out and trimmed the tree. Uh, so uh, within two months or a month, after the forestry trimmed the tree, they said I was again out of the compliance. Since then, I have trimmed the tree, sent myself, and back into compliance. My objection is if they trimmed the tree once and charged me $150, which I was willing to pay, but now they sent me another letter. So this is my opposition. Any questions? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, where is it? Do you happen to have the uh, uh, assessment page where? Uh, you're trying to assess different people. In other words, where are you at on this list? Second one. Second, second one? Second one. Okay. Maywood Drive. Okay, so, and you said you were assessed a second time? Right. I was I was sent a letter February 26th. I had until 20, 26th of April to bring it in compliance. That was because of a construction project that they were going to do in my neighborhood so that the trucks and so forth could go by mm -hmm. underneath it. But then... Uh, I attempted to bring it into compliance and misunderstood the heights. And uh, on the uh, forestry come along and took, oh, I would say two, three more branches off and sent me a bill for $150, which, I, you know, $150 is, is a lot of money, but they don't want to do this, and they want you to trim the tree, and it's kind of a deferrent. But then, on, uh, again, then the inspection on June 15th, they come through with an inspection again, and this was done by the Parks and Recreation Parks Department and Forestry Department, and they said I was out of compliance again. I mean, one, two months, or one month, mm -hmm. you know, take your car to a mechanic and it don't last, you know. Yeah. So they don't have the other 150 on this list? Uh, well, they, I trimmed it myself. Oh, oh okay, I understand. Now, now it's in compliance. I, oh, okay. I, Okay. Took it out by myself and, and brought it well within compliance. When they trimmed it, it only lasted a month. Uh -huh. Greg, you did it, Pat. Greg. I guess that's what I was after is that you actually did the work. You, uh, you were billed 150 and then you had to do additional work to put it in compliance? No, I did the work to start out with, and it didn't, get it, didn't bring it into compliance. I misunderstood there was still some, some limbs hanging down, and they come along and trimmed it with two or three more limbs. <laughs> well, a month later, they did another survey and sent me a letter saying, said that I wasn't in compliance and that I needed to trim the tree more. So as it stands right now, you're out of compliance? No, I, I took it upon myself <laughs> and went in there. You did it. Now you get it, right? I didn't need another $150 bill. Uh, sir, I was just going to ask you if you had uh, both those letters with you tonight. Yes, I do. Could you pass them up here, please? Do we have anyone that, from the Parks Department that can explain Dwayne, what happened? Dwayne, Dwayne. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Dwayne Stahl, representing Parks and Recreation. I'd like to give you a little background on this, uh, this case. Uh, back in the beginning of the, um, the year, the street department, in cooperation with the street department, uh, gave us a list of properties that uh, needed to be trimmed in order for street projects to be conducted in the spring of the year. Uh, property at 2724 South Maywood Drive happened to be one of these addresses that we, uh, we received. Uh, we, we proceeded by sending out a letter. Um, into the to the effect that uh, 
the, the trees were out of compliance and needed to be trimmed um, under the direction of the street department's uh, project. The letter was uh, sent out on February 26th. Uh, this is case number 92056. Asking that the property be trimmed by April 26th. After the complete or after the deadline date, we came out and um, on April 26, one of our processes in in our tree trimming process is we leave a note if there's additional trimming needed. We left a note extending the, the uh, trimming to uh, May 7. We came back after. Uh, the 7th on uh, May 12th. The picture there is um, our uh, measuring stick over the sidewalk. The clearance height of the sidewalk is, is 10 feet. And um, I don't know on your monitors, can you see, can you see that very well? <coughs> well below 10 feet. So the, the original letter specified 10 feet over the sidewalk, 12 over the street. Uh, we left a note asking for additional trimming to be conducted over the sidewalk and the street. Came back, uh, it was still out of compliance, so we did trim it, as the letter said. You will note that uh, when this was done, this was pretty much in the dormant season. When we leave, the trees are in compliance, but trees grow. This property also happened to be within our project trim area for that, um, our next phase which on um, the week of June 16th, we surveyed the entire neighborhood. At that time, the trees had leafed out and had grown. Um, the biggest growing point of the time for trees is in the spring. Um, and that's why you can count rings on, on trees because that's the fastest growing point of the, of the tree uh, growth spurt. So the trees were out of compliance and to treat everybody the same, uh, it flagged up again. So in that same process, we sent another letter um, asking that the property be trimmed up to city uh, code. And um, it was, it passed inspection after that, that period. Any questions? Question, Dwayne. No, thank you. Go ahead, Pat. I guess I, have, I don't really have a question, but um, I support 100% this program and what we do accomplish with this. But I don't think you can send a guy a notice and then send him a bill and then a, later send him another notice he's out of compliance. It just doesn't make any sense. I mean, it, you, you, if I were him and it, I was in that situation, I would have assumed that if the city came out or city hired somebody to come out to trim the tree and I was going to have to pay for it, that that was, you know, that was an acceptable job and it met the standard of what was needed. And the fact that it were that it was trimmed in a dormant time, I would think that the whoever trimmed it should be well aware uh, of what's going to happen a month later when all the when the leaves come out. And I, I just think this is, doesn't make any sense. So I'm sorry, I support 100% what you're doing. In this particular case, this doesn't make any sense. Further questions? Go ahead. I, uh, I happen to agree with uh, Councilor Costello. You know, and I, I, I like this program. Uh, I've climbed up my own trees and trimmed them, but uh, for him to have another thing a month later, whoever trimmed those trees didn't do a good job, I guarantee my work, and I would expect whoever uh, did that tree job to do the same. So uh, with that, um, can I make a motion here at this time? Uh, if you can hold off, because we need to get a motion to, we're, we're going to go through it and to approve items 1 through 56. If we got a motion to approve items one through fifty-six, then you can make a sub. You can make. You can make okay, a very good. So moved, Mr. Brown. Brown moves. Is there a second? I have a substitute motion. What? Just we got to get a second. Benninga. Benninga seconds. <laughs> now, now we're in the. We can. Um, we got a motion to approve items one through thirty-six. Now you can make a motion. I, I just. I'm just wondering if we're. If there's anybody else that wants to speak to their particular. Um, well, we can take one at a time, or you know, we should probably take them one at a time. Okay. Um, what do you want to do with, with item number two? Uh, I want to delete item number two off that list. Okay, a motion to delete item two. That's your motion? Second. Okay, Costello made a motion. Who's second that? Kermit? Okay, mm -hmm. Stagger's seconded. 
Further comments on that motion? Everybody understand the motion is to delete item number two, the hundred and fifty dollars. Everybody understand this? Everybody you know, all in favor of that motion to amend will vote yes. Those opposed will no, vote no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. That motion prevails 8 0. That item 2 has been amended out. Uh, um, others that wish to address the council on the tree trimming and removal for items 1 through 56? Anyone else wishing on the tree trimming? Come forward. I see no one come forward. We, we'll go ahead. Yeah, if I could just clarify, uh, Dwayne, um, the $150 that we assess, of course, that's, that's the minimum we assess. Uh, just wanted to clarify, do we have a mix here of private contractors doing this and city employees, or is it just private or just city? This is city employees. Just, okay, just city employees doing this. Okay. Okay, we've got a motion that's been made, second to approve um, the tree trimming removal items 1 through 56. Go ahead. Yeah, well, I'm going to be voting against this because um, I think Sioux Falls has to start moving in a different direction when it comes to tree trimming. First of all, the city has to take responsibility. These trees that we're talking about are in the city boulevard, and these are city trees. These are owned by the city of Sioux Falls. Uh, what we've been doing in the past is we've been, you know, having the adjacent property owners be responsible for city trees. And so we have to move away from that. Uh, I, I wish that uh, my colleagues on the city council would also consider what they do in Kansas City. In Kansas City, they take seriously their trees. They have the city responsible for their trees and maintaining their trees. So if citizens bother the city trees, they can be fined. Uh, here in Sioux Falls, it's the opposite. If you don't take care of the city tree, you're fined. So I would wish that in the future that we would start taking a look at uh, how Kansas City does things because I think they do a good job uh, and a much better job of maintaining trees than we do. Other comments? Go ahead. Um, I assume that you've worked for the uh, city for some time, and you recall the time maybe that the city did actually maintain the trees in the parking. Would you have any recollection on the amount of money that we spend every year back then maintaining the uh, trees in the parking? I wouldn't have that any. information. Okay. Thanks. For the comments, we've got a motion been made and seconded to approve items 1 through 56 with the deletion of item number 2. Further comments? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion to approve items 1 through 56 with deleting 2. We'll vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? No. Anderson? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. <laughs> that motion prevails. Seven yes, one no. Items one through 56, including two, has been approved. Seven. Item 25B, is that right? Yes, we're on item 25B, and for the listening audience, that is Minnehaha County snow removal. My name is Matt Nelson. I work for the uh, parking office for the city of Sioux Falls, and I'm responsible for overseeing the sidewalk snow removal program. Um, before I start, I just want to give you a quick overview of the program and how we notify the citizens of Sioux Falls. The ordinance states that the owner or the person in possession of the property is responsible for clearing the ice or snow 48 hours after the last snowfall. Um, if they do not clear that within uh, 72 hours, the city is is supposed to go out there and clear that property for them and they are allowed to uh, remove it at the owner's expense. Um, and that's what we enforce. Uh, we do our best to work with the citizens and make sure they know the process and give them more notification than is required in the ordinance. For the ordinance, it's required that they are notified and it actually says specifically by newspaper. Uh, we do run notifications in the newspaper last year. These are copies of the notifications. Um, they ran on October 24th, October 25th, November 1st, December 5th, and December 6th. Another way that we notify the citizens is through the flyer that goes out. This is mailed out to all citizens. It talks about street snow removal. It also talks about sidewalk snow removal. It also talks about a program for people that may be uh, income or physically challenged, uh, that they can have that snow removed for free. And all that is in here, and it goes to all citizens. 
We also run a video there it's on Channel 16. If you wanted to see it, we could sure show it for you. But it runs uh, throughout the snow season, and there's also, I guess, crawlers, as you'd call them. There are scripts that go across the screen to remind people of the sidewalk snow removal program and, and what, they, what their responsibilities are. We go out to properties. The first time we inspect a property, we do attempt to uh, leave them a notice. We leave this on the door. This is a notification. It tells them that what they need to do to be in compliance. Uh, oftentimes, additional notes are written on there, and there's a contact number where they can contact somebody if they do have questions. So this snow season, we received a total of 922 complaints. Uh, nearly 90% of those properties came into compliance on their own. 10.6% of those properties did not, and they required the city to uh, clear them for, them for them. That was 98 total properties. Of that, 53 remain unpaid, and that's what the assessment role is for today. Um, and just so you know, we do not find any people for this. All we do is pass the cost of the contractor on to the citizen. And that's all I have on okay, the Matt. assessment list. Uh, questions, Matt? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have a question, but I'm not sure that you've appeared before the city council before, and I just want to tell you, I think you did a really nice job just reminding the, the uh, public and us as far as the, the very many steps that are taken uh, regarding uh, snow removal in our city. So thank you for your work. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Others uh, wish to address the council on the snow removal for Minnehaha County for items 1 through 51. Well, my name is Mike McGreevy, and I live at 2312 South Holt. And I might say I appreciate the opportunity to uh, speak to you. Incidentally, I have absolutely no quarrel with the ordinance. I, I think it's a good idea, and I, I appreciate it. I was uh, in Georgia all last winter, and I had arranged for somebody to remove my snow, and I got six or seven or eight bills and um, thought everything was being done. And then I was contacted by Matt, and I got a bill for snow removal for uh, four hundred and forty five dollars and I was a little taken aback um, incidentally um, uh, I, I called Matt and then uh, he was kind enough the next day to get back to me I didn't know he would and he said uh, the contractor had he had contacted the contractor which I appreciated didn't know he was going to do and he said the contractor had made a mistake and I thought oh yeah here uh, but the mistake did reduce it, but it reduced it to $349. Um, the person who removed my snow uh, removed the driveway and the sidewalk, and he charged me $25. And I, I think it's fair to say that 80% of that is the driveway. Um, so uh, at that point, I, I also I had my brother who was checking my house, and every time it snowed, I would call him and. Um, so, of course, I, I assumed that there was, you know, 20 inches of snow or, you know, a lot of snow out there. And so I called Pat, and he said, no, I went by, and it was cleared off. And I, I just chalked that off to a mistake. Uh, Matt also sent me, which I appreciated, two uh, photographs on, on the Internet. And I misunderstood the photographs, and I'm not trying to pry my case here, but I thought what he had sent me was two photographs, and he has them here, of the property after it had been cleared. Um, it, it wasn't. It was a before and an after shot. And so I guess really what I'm doing here is I'm asking the city council to, to look <clears throat> at the before shot. I don't deny. It, I think what happened was it was cleared. And then a day or two later, um, there was some drainage and in, in, uh, uh, Two squares of the sidewalk had ice on it, um, and and that needed to be cleared. And I, I'm, I'm not arguing that I don't owe something. Uh, the contractor went out there, uh, but but I guess I, what I want you to do is look at the before picture, and if any one of you says, "Yeah, that's a $400 job," by um, I, I guess I give up. But uh, if Matt, if you could show those, that would be great. I apologize. I don't see this one on my CD, but I do have pictures of it, and I will show them on the image projector.
That's the after. I don't doubt that it was cleaned off. And that's the before. And the, the, the ice at the bottom, which would be the north end, uh, oh, I don't know how much that would be. That would be like one of those squares, maybe a little bit more. And then the, well, I guess you can just see it yourself. My every inclination was, and my, my typical response would have been, oh, just pay the dumb thing and, and move on. But you know, um, somehow I, I look at that and say, you know, that's $445. Um, and I don't want to be offensive to anybody, but I could clean that off pretty fast. I, I've done it. I, I don't deny it was there. so. Um, I guess that's that's all I've got to say, and uh, I'll just leave it in your hands. Does anybody have any questions for me? Uh, Thank you, Mr. McGreevy. I would agree with your assessment of $350 for that particular removal. Matt, I'm wondering, <clears throat> excuse me, do you keep track of contractors that we've had concerns about? This is my first year in this position, but uh, I do know a little bit of the history of previous contractors. Um, this is the first year we've used this contractor. It was the low bid. It was bid at $40 per man hour. Okay. Um, the previous contractor was Shadows. Um, shouldn't, it doesn't really matter who it was, but we had issues with them, um, and they were not able to keep the contractor contract. And the contractor before that was around for about two years um, left because he was not making enough money. And his bid was $40? His bid actually was at $50. The original contractor was at $50 per hour. I know the previous contractor before the one we have now was at 59 is what they, they bid it at. I spoke to him at actually just recently because we're rebidding this contract. Um, and he was high. This guy was at $40 an hour, the, the current contractor. I can tell you that the dates that this was done, um, I, I would agree that it looked like it had been cleared by somebody at some point, but there was a lot of uh, melting and refreezing this year um, by the description. I'm looking at a half inch to three inches of ice. The dates when this was cleared was it was February 2nd and February 3rd, um, which it was extremely cold during that time of year. I can tell you the exact temperatures. In February, On February 2nd, the, the low temperature was minus 4, the high was 23. On February 3rd, the low was minus 6, the high was 14. I think typically you think you run out to your driveway and when you clear this, it's probably that day when it's 36 degrees and you don't have a jacket on because you think it's a heat wave. Well, this is one of the coldest days of the year. Um, you can hardly chip that ice off. Part of it is labor, the labor portion of it, and then the other part of it is actually the ice melt that they use. They use a high quality ice melt. It's probably the best ice melt you can get. Um, it runs at about 20 bucks for 50 pounds of it. They said that we, they charge us 40 cents a pound for it, or charge a citizen that for it. So to simply say you can just scrape it off, that's not correct. And we expect them to have it, per the ordinance, down to the concrete, edge to edge. So my child doesn't slip on the way to school. We have people that are, you know, limited in their ability to walk can walk sidewalks. I get numerous calls from people that are disabled, have difficulty walking, people that have slipped. Um, we actually had a case against the city that was brought up, went through a risk management department about an individual that slipped, and the first thing he did was come to the city and said, have you had a complaint on it? Why isn't this cleared per ordinance? I fell on it. What are you going to do about it? I agree with you, Matt, but I got to tell you, <clears throat> my experience, and I've been in my position more than a year, is that we have a parking lot that's almost five plus acres. We have probably 600 feet of sidewalk, and our average snow removal cost is just under 500 bucks. So to charge somebody 350 for this seems a little bit ridiculous to me. And I'm going to make a motion that we uh, amend item number 35, 34, I'm sorry, to uh, $40. Second Anderson. We, we got to get a motion to approve items 1 through 51. Can we do that? <coughs> we'll move Knutson. Knutson moves. Is there a second? Second, Brown. Brown seconds. Now, now, now your motion, uh, Gerald, is to take and to 
Susan. I would like to amend item number 34 from $349.80 to, I believe the first charge, was that correct, Matt, was $40 per hour? They charge us $40 per labor hour plus the additional cost of salt on there. Okay, we'll make it an even 50. Okay, your motion is to amend it to fifty dollars. To assessment of fifty dollars. Benning makes a motion. Is there a second? Second Anderson. Anderson second. Further comments on, on the motion to drop the assessment from three forty nine eighty to fifty dollars. Is there any got a motion been made and seconded to for that motion? Further discussion? If there is none. All in favor of that motion to delete to drop three forty nine to eighty to fifty dollars vote yes, those opposed no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. That motion prevails. Um, others that wish to address the council on items 1 through 51 for the snow removal from Minnehaha County? Mayor, Council, my name is Ernie Bay. I live at uh, 5001 East 15th Street. And my problem is extremely similar to the gentleman that just left. We were on vacation, Christmas vacation. Now, I didn't have anyone to clear my sidewalks, which is my fault. However, when I got home, there was a notice on my door that they had to be cleaned off. Well, just, they, just, we're trying to find, did anybody find 48, it? 48. 48, okay. Okay, okay. go ahead. Then. Uh, the, the sidewalk had been trampled on so much that it was virtually all ice. Well, I went out and I did my best to get it off. I first used a snowblower, then I tried a shovel, and I even tried some snow melt. Well, apparently I didn't do it well enough because they came back. Uh, it says, uh, follow up January 6th, notified to clear January 6th, cleared snow and ice January 6th. Folks, all they did was scatter some blue ice melt. Now, I heard that it was expensive, but to scatter some blue ice melt is all the contractor did, and now I have a bill for $349.80. Like I say, it's extremely similar to the gentleman that was just before me. Quit questions of Ernest? No, thank you very much. Matt, do we know who the contractor was? <clears throat> yes. Is it similar to the gentleman before? Say we, use, we have the one contractor that does it, and they do some other contracts for the city also. I believe they do the uh, weed and grass removal. Um, Dwayne, would you know that? Yep. So they, they do several contracts for the city. This is not the only contract they have. Um, I can show you some pictures of this property here. They're up. This is one of the four pictures. the thing to consider there that there is a significant amount of ice that's on there and he spoke to it himself where it was difficult to remove with a snowblower or a shovel and I'll tell you with this bill <coughs> the contractor was there with three individuals for 1.75 hours uh, forty dollars an hour that was two hundred ten dollars in labor labor um, and then the salting it was six bags of salt and uh, or it's ice melt I shouldn't say salt and that was hundred and twenty dollars I can show you the ice melt, the cost on the ice melt. I have a printout from Granger where that would be an accurate cost if you went to buy it. Sir, that's not true. There were not three people. Just a minute, please. Go ahead, Cage. You have a question? Yeah, I didn't quite get the name of the contractor. 
It's all seasons. All seasons. Property maintenance. Kenny? And excuse me, I, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Matt. Yeah. Matt? Okay. Matt, you also said, I think, at the beginning of this that with your program you have options for people with disabilities or is that correct? We don't offer it, but there is a program. Um, it's offered through. It is called the Scoop It program, um, and it allows for people that qualify on income basis or it's income and basically disability if they cannot do it themselves, so they'll uh, go out and scoop it for you. Okay. And obviously with this before picture, it looks like somebody's gone by with a snowblower and just cleared it out for like a neighbor or something might have come by. I don't know. Ernest, did you have something else you wanted to ask? If you, if you would come just forward and speak into the mic, we'd appreciate it, please. Thank you. You had something earlier I think you were going to say. <laughs> well, I get embarrassed in front no, of you. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. Did you, did you, you were going to say something with me? Uh, no, I, well, what I said was there were not three people on the crew. Okay. There yeah. was one person, and he scattered salt, or whatever it was. He, it was blue. Okay. And uh, that melted it very well. And as you can see, the after pictures, there's still, it shows that it was not shoveled in any way. Because if it was, it would have been completely clean, and it's not. And th that's what I was saying. Okay. Thank you very much. Questions? Uh, you know, question, uh, Mr. Bay, is it, you know, I always think this is kind of a difficult um, business trying to make these kinds of fair decisions up here because, Again, I, you know, we do have this ordinance on the books, which I, you know, have supported and so forth. And so, uh, you know, people like me do expect the city staff to enforce the ordinances. And, you know, fortunately, no one, um, you know, fell because if they had broken a leg or something, the, the uh, medical bill would be way more than $349. So it's what I'm telling you is I'm struggling a, a little bit with this story, even though I'm extremely supportive of our overall policy. And, and I know that we also build in a little bit of a punitive, you know, feature to the, to the uh, bill because we're trying, you know, we don't want to be in the snow removal business for uh, all of our citizens in Sioux Falls. So I'm just curious, if our, if our positions were, re, we were reversed right now, I mean, what do you think, I mean, you know, there's the ordinance on the books and we've had a full discussion tonight. I mean, what do you think would be uh, the fair, fair to you and fair to me as a city councilor that needs to, uh, you know, vote correctly. Well, I agree with the ordinance 100 percent. And I'm not trying to get out of anything other than money. I think I was charged too much. That's simply it. I do agree with the ordinance, and I have complied with the ordinance. I've lived in Sioux Falls many, many years, and uh, I've never had a problem before. If you want to get back to the tree problem, I had a problem with those folks as well. So what amount would you, do you think in, in this case is fair? Because I understand what you're saying. Okay. It didn't take the gentleman an hour to do it, but I'll pay him an hour's wage, whatever that amounts to, and whatever the concoction he used to put on there. I'd be more than happy to pay that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I will uh, make a motion for whatever an hour's labor is, uh, probably close to $70. Is it 40 40 40 yeah, Thanks. I figured you'd know, Kermit. <laughs> and $120 for the ice melt, so we're looking at $160. I'll second that motion, Knudsen. Yours is 160 Okay, the motion has been made. To reduce the 349.80 to 160, a motion has been made and seconded. Further comments? Go ahead. Well, I guess one concern I have is the contractor did not comply with city code. He didn't clear it totally, according to city code. No, he didn't. So I think we're being very generous here uh, to this contractor. Uh, I guess I would have a substitute motion of $50. Substitute motion for $50. Is there a second? That 
dies for lack of seconds, so we're back to the motion for 160. Further comments? All in favor of the motion for 160, vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. That motion prevails 8 to 0, so the 349.80 is down to 160. Others that wish to address the council on items 1 through 51 for the snow removal? Good evening. Uh, I'm Jeremy Conrad. I'm not sure what number it is. Um, 2609 North Aiden. Number nine. Thanks. I'm sorry to take your time up. My story is really similar to uh, basically, uh, <laughs> it's so funny to get up here and you're kind of nervous. Um, I got a little, uh, the red notice on the inside door, like around the corner of our garage. And, you know, all winter long we go through our garage and not our front door. And uh, it wasn't even on the front door. It was on, like, this side door that you really can't see unless you actually walk around the house to, to look at it. So we had no idea it was there. Um, I actually have a little bit of a story, too. I wasn't out of town, but I had just broken my uh, arm. And uh, so I probably wasn't on top of it like I normally would be. I just got a really expensive <coughs> snowblower, and I love using it. And um, it, I, I have no problem clearing with my sidewalks, and I agree with this ordinance also. Um, so I'm trying to think what I came here to say. Uh, uh, when we woke up in the, the morning, we saw that these guys were, like, out, like, with these machines, you know, and stuff outside. And so I went out there decided to find out what the heck they were doing. And uh, so they said, hey, you got served a notice, and you didn't clear it off quick enough. And I was like, well, where's the notice? Where'd they put it? And then he showed me, and it was around this corner at, at the, on our side door. And so it's like, well, hey, man, here's the thing. I'm up now. I know about it. I'll take care of it. I'll have a friend come over. My arm's obviously broken. I had this big thing. And uh, he said, sorry, it's too late. And, uh, and it was just two guys, the same kind of situation. There's only two guys there, and it shows three men. Um, well, I guess, uh, I don't know if you've got the photos. I, sh I sure do. Um, the before pictures, I mean, you can see that I've been taking care of my sidewalks. There is just a, a little bit of ice, like right as the sidewalks meet, where it goes out to the road. You know, it's like the half circle. There's a little bit of, uh, of uh, ice there because it really hadn't snowed recently. Um, and we thought the rule, too, is, you know, 72 hours from a snowstorm, but, I, you know, it's obviously ice, too, I just learned. But um, so it's just like this little bit of ice at the corner, and then down the sidewalk the far away, there's about maybe 35 feet of sidewalk, and we got charged like $520 for these guys to do it. They said they used 400 pounds of salt. And uh, we were just flabbergasted. I mean, for me to be here and to have my daughter up this late, I mean, it's just, we, were, we just thought this was so crazy to get charged this. And, um, you know, the fact that there was two guys here and that they had to come back a, a second day to, to do it. And they had, like, bobcats the first day. Why they couldn't get it off real quick uh, it was really weird. We, we just felt like uh, we had the same thing that you were thinking earlier, like, Something's up with the contractor or something like maybe um, they're kind of scammy, but I don't want to take up too much of your time. The only other thing I wanted to mention was uh, when we got a hold of uh, Matt, which was extremely nice when we called him and told me how I could come down here and, like, you know, say my piece or whatever. Um, while we were talking to him, we were concerned about 400 pounds of ice on our, on our thing, you know, on our sidewalk because we just had put in, you know, <coughs> new grass at this new house, so... Uh, we were assured that it was veg vegetation safe and um, has some pictures that he won't have, but I have. You can see all of the grass that was killed. Uh, we're talking like almost everything alongside the sidewalk and also killed uh, two trees. So it cost us hundreds of dollars to replace all that and with the trees and all the grass and all the work to get rid of like the soil filled, um, you know area so I just uh, again have no problem paying for, for them since it was too late and they had to continue their work since they came but um, I just think it was way too much and way too long they built they said it took uh, over eight hours to do it and 400 pounds of salt so <laughs> it seems kind of crazy questions I mean look there's the picture 
And then there's the side by the fence area. So we had, it's a hill right there and uh, drainage comes down to our corner lot and I guess we had some, we must have had, you got the temperatures, maybe some hot weather that caused a bunch of snow melt and uh, obviously a drift I must have, you know, something may have happened when it, my arm was broken there, but uh, that's really all I have to say. D? Uh, Sorry. I would like to make a motion in light of the extra information. Uh, I would like to totally delete item number nine. Motion. Second. Motion is to delete Knudsen. Is who second it? Uh, I did. Staggers. Staggers did. Okay. To take the five nineteen forty down to zero. That's yeah. a motion. Okay. Yeah. That's the That's motion. Any further comments, Greg? I was just curious. Are you at, are you doing that, D? Because of the uh, maybe poor notification to the customer? Is that? Y yes, and and particularly the the it. it Killing the grass. Again, I, you know, I hate to m take away from this great program, uh, but, but especially in light of the damage that was done to that much grass and trees, I mean, I just, it just sounds excessive to me, and I'm just, it's just kind of a coming from the heart here. So the motion is to take it to zero. I have a motion been made. And second, further comments? Go ahead, Bob. I, uh, I would just like to point out that, you know, notice on the door or whatever, when white stuff falls out of the sky and it lands on your sidewalk, that's your notice. I mean, I get it. I shovel my sidewalk. Uh, I don't understand it. Why it didn't get done in the first place, maybe you had a, an arm, but there's an opportunity to get somebody else. I would agree that it does seem excessive, but I don't want to let it totally off the hook because your sidewalk simply wasn't shoveled. Yeah, I don't believe that there was a snowfall within 72 hours. I think it was... Uh, uh, some melt, but I, I agree. It is my responsibility to clean my sidewalks, absolutely. And I knew what I was getting into when I got a corner lot, so I agree. Brilliant. Matt, do you have any further explanation on this property before we vote on this? I can tell you that I know they were there two days, so the, the man hours are there. They're three hours the first day, two, uh, two man hours the second day. Um, 400 pounds sounds like a lot. Eight bags of ice melt probably sounds more reasonable. Uh, as far as the damage on the lawn, it's not acceptable. It's the first I've heard of it. We will address that with the contractor, and they're responsible for correcting that. Um, but the notice on the door is not required. This is a courtesy. So the, the notification, this is more than that we do it with everyone. Yes. Um, um, Matt, did you say that the, the contractor then replaced the grass and the two trees? I will work with him. Um, if it's determined, I would say from those pictures, it definitely looks like it's ice melt damage to me. If we can determine the trees were also included in that, he would be responsible. We would look to charge him for that. Yeah, because it's for that reason, you know, that I made my kind of radical motion. <laughs> and, I, and I understand that. I mean, I, you know, I, like I said, looking at the damage, that's the first item of it, so. Kind of motion been made and second to amend item number nine from 519 to 40 to zero. Is there further comments? Well, Can I make a substitute motion? Sure may. I'd like to make a substitute motion to make the amount of $100. Second. Yours is a $100 substitute motion made by Litz, seconded by Brown, to Actually take the 519.40. Pardon? Anderson. 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 Okay, mm -hmm. excuse me. Anderson to take the 519.40 down to 100. That's a substitute motion that we will vote upon. Further comments on that substitute motion? Being none, all in favor of that motion will vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? No. Anderson? Yes. Beniga? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. That motion prevailed seven yes, one no. So it takes a 51940 down to 100. Others that wish to address the council on items 1 through 51? <clears throat> I have a bad cold. My name is Doug Holden, and I live at 25815 North Kiwanis. The property in question is a rental property at 2101 South Grange Avenue. I uh, was told that they were that, uh, they put a notice on the front door of that property. Uh, the problem is that nobody uses the front door at that property. It's they item number 25. Excuse me, Mr. Holden. Item 25. Uh, it's the property uh, has a garage in the rear and a driveway in the rear. 
so everybody uses the rear door. And the mailbox is at the rear door. So nobody seeing the notice that was obviously put on the front door. Uh, I, this is a property that is registered with the city, and I would like to uh, suggest that uh, they cross-reference these properties if they're with the uh, owners of registered properties so that they could be called and told that their renters are not cleaning the property. Uh, if I had been notified that the sidewalk was not cleaned properly, I would have been over there doing it myself. Uh, I have the pictures of it, and obviously there was ice on the sidewalk. Uh, I'm not saying that it wasn't. Uh, if uh, I talked to the renters about it after the fact, and they said they shoveled it, but the people had walked on it so much that they, it was all ice. Well, if they would have told me about it, I would have come over there with some salt and taken care of it, but they didn't tell me that. And... I think the contractor was a little excessive with uh, 400 pounds of salt. That's about uh, three pounds of salt for every foot. And uh, he also charged me uh, $240 labor. I have cleaned that sidewalk myself, and I have used about 50 pounds of salt with uh, about the similar conditions of what I see in the pictures, and it took me about two hours to do it. And uh, so I, uh, I worked for the city for 39 years. I wish I was making the kind of money this guy's making. <laughs> I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Are there questions? Yeah. Go ahead. So, um, Mr. Holden, so you or sorry, I didn't quite hear your name. But so this property is property that belongs to you but is rented out? Right. Okay. okay and... Again, because I don't, as a city councilor here, I don't want to get too soft on this whole issue tonight, but I was curious. So do you, since it's rented property, um, do you regularly, you know, in, I mean, I don't know how much other rental property you have, if, if any, but I mean, so when it's winter, do you sometimes go by to check on the property or? Oh, yeah, I, I do drive by there, but, uh, uh, you know, it, it's not an everyday thing. I live about 10 miles away from it, so I usually go by there at least once or twice a month. It's either looking good and, and uh, everything is taken care of. Uh, I try to keep the property looking nice. Uh, if they don't do the job, I do it. And uh, I guess uh, I've had the property for 44 years. That's the first complaint I've ever had. May, may I ask another yes. question? Um, and very respectfully, I was wondering, after this particular incident, regardless of how the city council resolves it this evening, is so after that incident, the, did you consider asking those renters, or not asking, but telling those renters that if, in fact, this happened again, that um, this would be charged to, their, to them and not to you? Yes, I did. I, I approached them after the, after the fact. I, since I didn't even know about it till I got the bill, I went and talked to him about it and told him if this happens again, you will be paying it. But uh, I guess I, I agree that the sidewalk should be cleaned, and if I would just be notified, I would make sure that it's done. I think that the bill of $424 is a little excessive. Uh, for something I probably could have done myself in about two hours. Yeah, I see something else. Yeah. And I was wondering, I, I assume from a practical standpoint, it's very difficult for the city of Sioux Falls staff to, you know, to look up the actual owner of each property that they go to on snow removal or trees or trimming or whatever. So I assume that that uh, would get to be an ex rather time um, consuming project but well, well, just, I was told uh, I was told that uh, they do call some people uh, I just wasn't called myself but I, I understand they do call some and I uh, I don't know why I wasn't called but I would appreciate it if uh, maybe the, the system could be to
try to contact the owners by phone. Uh, most people, uh, if they, I mean, I, I'm sure there's other people that don't use their front door. Uh, I used to live in town myself, and I never used the front door. So if they'd have brought it to my front door, I wouldn't have known it either. If your garage is in the back, you go out the back door. And that's what the situation is there. So in your opinion, if we were re our positions were reversed tonight, what do you think would be fair to everyone involved since the ordinance is on the books? Well, uh, I guess uh, I wouldn't hire this contractor again. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, I, I would say that uh, maybe $100 would be... Uh, Okay, but I, I think 424 is a little excessive. Thank you. Great. Matt, can we see these pictures? Yes. We're having trouble uh, on our monitors. <coughs> this property, this is a before picture and what this property was one inch of solid ice packed on the entire sidewalk so this one was obviously going to be a little more difficult to clear um, it is entirely covered uh, the other thing to note this the day this was cleared the temperatures were minus two that day this was February 2nd another extremely cold day um, the other thing to note I would suggest Mr. Holden register his property with the city of Sioux Falls as a rental it is not currently registered as a rental property, and it is supposed to be. And if we would have had that information, it would have been easier for us to attempt to contact him. And we do make attempts to call people when it's available. We use the phone book, and we have one laptop uh, that we have available to search uh, through Internet-type web pages for, like, yellowpages.com. So we, we do attempt to call when we can. Um, this one was not cleared right away. The notice was left, and it was cleared four days later. If I could ask for some clarification, uh, Matt, you mentioned you try to call these people. Every property owner you try to call? I can't guarantee that everyone is called, but typically we will make an attempt to call them or identify their... Because this is the first time I've ever heard of the uh, city trying to call anybody in regard to a sidewalk. It's always, well, we leave the, the notice, and that kind of covers everything. But you really try to call everybody? Yes, I can tell you that a lot of the people I have attempted to call myself. Um, I, you'll notice that in the previous snow season, we cleared 203 properties. This year, we cleared only 98 properties. The reason I would say that is is because I would have them typically call me before any property was cleared because I wanted to give the okay because I don't feel comfortable charging somebody unless I feel they went through the proper procedures to do that. Well, I, let me tell you, I, I'm very happy that you are uh, notifying these people by phone. I, I think that's good. And if they're not there, I just assume you leave a voicemail message if they have a machine? Or? Well, you would be surprised how many of the numbers are unlisted or the property's not registered with the city as a rental. It makes it difficult to contact owners. Mm -hmm. um, at times, we've even attempted to look up somebody on a water bill, and the pro it'll be disconnected, and we can't get a hold of somebody, or it won't show the correct ownership. Okay. Randy? If I may just... Clarify on the calls. That's going to be limited to rental property owners. We don't try to call every property owner. Oh, okay, just rental. So okay. we're trying to notify the property owners. Oh, okay. Thank you, Randy. Okay. This is a second picture, and I, you can tell from this picture it looks like no attempt was made to clear it. And I don't know if, if there was a tenant in the property. You said there was, correct? There was a tenant currently in the property. There was a tenant living. You had a, a, re a rental tenant in there? Yeah. It, okay, sir, did, did, did you, did, I thought you indicated that you thought your property was registered? Yes, it is. Okay. It's registered. And you're saying it's not. It's do, they, do they expire? They do expire, but the system that we have through Navaline I, that I use for this is I looked, I actually just recently looked, and there are some that show expired rental registrations. This one I did not see a rental registration in. I can look now and double check. You can watch me look on the screen if you would like. Sure. Mr. Olton, did you understand that, that those registrations expire? And do you remember how long ago you, you did register your property? Uh, it's about uh, three, four years ago. Uh, is it three years? It might have been yeah. about three years ago. They expire after three years, so there may be a possibility that yours has expired. Oh, I, you have to renew it? Yes. Sorry about that. That's all right. Further questions? 
Any council discussion on item 25? We move on. And we'll move on. Others that wish to address the council on items 1 through 50 on the snow removal? Anyone else? Mr. Mayor, on item 25, I'll go ahead and move that uh, we um, delete the $424 assessment and move it down to $100. I'll second that motion, Knudsen. Okay, that motion has been made by Snyder, second by Knudsen, to take the 424 and uh, drop that to 100. The motion made, seconded, and further discussion. Not all in favor of that motion, vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? No. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Beniga? Yes. Brown? No. Costello? Yes. Jameson? No. That motion prevails. Five yes, three no. Others that wish to address the council on items one through fifty one for snow removal. Okay. Dwight Dimestra, twenty one oh eight South Fifth Avenue, Sioux Falls. I got a bill for uh, nine hundred and sixty dollars for doing. What property uh, is that, Dwight? Uh, my personal home and the home that uh, is adjoining what, my um, property. Is it twelve and thirteen? Which one? Twelve and thirteen. 14. 14. Yeah, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. 15. Is that? I I do not have that schedule. So there's one here at uh, twenty one. Uh, 12 South Fifth Avenue? Correct. That's $519? Yes. Okay, that's when you want to talk about? Okay. All of them. It's, okay. it's all start. connected. Well, you're going to talk with all of them. Let's start with that one then. All right. Well, I don't have anything to say other that the other folks haven't said. Um, Matt says that notice was hung on my front door. I don't use it. I've lived in that area for 60 years. I've <coughs> shoveled the snow uh, religiously. I shovel the uh, uh, fire hydrant across the street. I make sure that the edges are broken down where so you can walk through the sidewalks to the street. My uh, little skid loader happened to have a cylinder froze up on it. And uh, I missed the day that the uh, contractor was out and uh, was billed $960 um, after I had shoveled. <clears throat> I missed the contractor. I thought my kids had shoveled the sidewalk. There we go. Um, and I don't know what else to say. I, the job was not to my satisfaction. So, so to what you're talking about, 2112 South Fifth, 2108 South Fifth Avenue, and then you're talking about 2112 again. Then we come Six. back. There's another one, and then uh, it's 620 East Oak Street. Yours too. Yeah. Then? Yes, it is. I own about a half a city block down there. So you're talking about four pieces of property. Right. Okay. And that's all for all of them. It's all the same. That is that what you're talking about? I'm sorry, say that again. You're talking all the same on all of them. Is the same theme of what the other ones had said? Yes. I missed it. You know, I missed the notice. I didn't see it. Um, but I got it done the day after these guys were over. Uh, it didn't appear as though it had been done. There's still ice and stuff there. I salted the thing. Um, there's been a question about how much salt was used. Um, I have a picture here of the amount of salt that I used. I have a uh, invoice about what it costs. Um, I feel that $960 is out of line. That's for all four, right? For all four. Questions? It's, it's, it's not like this is new to me. You know, I've, I've shoveled that, that uh, lot, that block, for
for a lot of years. Um, so were these four, were these four properties um, cited on the same day? I'm not sure of that. I think two of them were. I think 2108 and 2112 were. And and the reason I asked that question, it just seemed to me that at if I had several properties and I I you know it would be very possible for me to miss a notice you know on a side door or something and I prefer a front door actually. But it just seems to me that I would, I mean, if, if I'd get one notice, I would kind of, it would be a good reminder to me, I think, that I had other properties that possibly were in the same situation. So I guess it's what I'm asking you is, um, did that occur to you when you got one violation and you had this other, these other properties that maybe you needed to get those done? I knew I needed to get them done. I do them all the time. But one of the uh, properties is a vacant lot. And uh, it's 116 feet wide by a really good depth. Um, so I didn't see anything hanging on a fence anywhere that would say that uh, there was a problem. Um, I did not, uh, I didn't see any notice at 2112. And um, Matt said that uh, they had put notice on my front door. I didn't see, I found a notice uh, a couple of days later, I think, uh, that was post dated in my mailbox. But uh, well, you can see the tire tracks. Is this after Matt? Do you know? That's a before. That would be after. Yeah, that's what it looked like after I did it. And I salted it. I plowed it. I salted it. They may have beat me by a day, but uh, I did it. Further questions, Dwight? Uh, thank you, Dwight. Here we've got items 12, 13, 14, and 15, I believe. Is there any action? Go ahead. Can I ask uh, Matt a question? Sure. Matt, there's uh, four, four items here. There's a couple for $63. What were those? They were snow removal also. They were uh, done later in March. That would be your typical when you would probably go out and clear your sidewalks. Um, and they shoveled quick. They were cleared quickly. There was not really any ice to move, remove. So it was, you know, you can see a $63 bill I don't think is out of line at all. And, you know, when, I know the other ones are high, but there is a reason for that. They put the man hours in there. And that goes for all of them. So if it's just a uh, light, light snow and they don't remove it, a household could expect to spend 50 to $60 just to have it simply shoveled. I would agree with that. It's removing this ice that is causing... It, that is all the money that costs the most. And this is just, these are pictures from one property. And you can tell from the pictures, it looks like there was a skid loader that rolled over these. There's skid loader prints in there. But it's a, there's a solid inch of ice, inch to two to three inches of ice on his property on, on that, on the picture of this property alone. And this was the most expensive one that was cleared. Um, and the other one, I believe, is close to it. So that's what the high cost is. And Matt, would you think the ice is really caused by... Looks like he used a skid steer or something to try to move it. Then he spread the salt on it that really didn't use enough salt. And then it melted and it froze again. Is that probably what happened? That's probably part of it. Plus, with, there was a lot of it. Well, there were some warmer days where it warmed up last winter, and then it melted stuff, and it all refroze. I'm guessing it, a lot of it was packed down, it melted, it froze, and it created a solid sheet of ice. The other thing that I will add is there are four properties that we cleared. We received more complaints than that on uh, Mr. Dimestra. Is that right, Dwight? Okay. His properties, um, actually, I, I, I talked to him several times myself. Uh, I had his cell phone number uh, that was given to me. On one of his properties, we attempted to call him, but he had several numbers that had been disconnected. Um, he called in. Where I got he called in initially when he received the first bills. Um, so, you know, so it's not like he didn't know. It's not like he wasn't notified. He's had, I think, rentals for quite a while. Um, you know, and obviously this isn't a first. And they, just one last question. The notification you put on the door is really just a courtesy? It is a courtesy. Right. 
Matt, just, uh, just for clarification, um, are we talking about a couple different snowfalls here from 1213 and then 1415? The first two properties are from an earlier snowfall. We can go through them one at a time. Or um, the 2112 South 5th, that was on 1226. Um, we actually cleared that on 15. The complaint came in on uh, 1226. We did the first inspection on 1230. The 2108 South 5th, those that was the same snowfall, same complaint date. It was cleared on the on the January 5th. Also, the the later ones, um, we received the complaints on 3-2, and we cleared them immediately because he'd already received notices. And I actually had talked to him. I've got a, a different property that there was a complaint on, and I talked to him on the cell phone to himself, to him specifically. I said, Dwight, we're not going to make the extra efforts. I'm not going to make any calls to you. You need to understand these need to be cleared, and that's what we expect. Next time, we're just going to go out and clear it. And that's what happened after the last snowfall, and that was in March. Thanks. Go ahead. Yeah, Matt, uh, Matt could, could, could we see the before and after pictures of the 63.60? Which ones are? $63.60. Absolutely. Uh, See what the snow looks like. If I can just point out one other item. If you notice the date on the picture when it was cleared, it was January 7th. The last significant snowfall we had was December 20th, so there was plenty of ample time within that period to, to get the sidewalks cleared, and that's one of the reasons you're going to see that one inch of solid packed ice. So. That's for sixty-three dollars and sixty cents on that one. And then, can you show us the other sixty-three sixty? Further questions of 12, 13, 14, and 15? Thank you, Dwight. The action they want to do 12, 13, 14, and 15. Not, see, no one, let's move on. And is, is there others that wish to address the council on any item from 1 to 51 on the snow removal? See no one coming forward. So we've got, we have some motions to amend. I think there are items, was it items 9, 25, and 34 and 48? I believe those were four. Those were four, right? Okay, we've got a motion to approve, and then we had made adjustments on items 9, 25, 34, and 48. But in, so all in favor of the motion to approve as we have, go ahead. Yeah, I was, I was going to speak here. Um, I guess I have a lot of sympathy for the 6360 uh, charges, but still, it's, it's still hard to believe that some of these other charges where there was a lot of ice is, is just seems so excessive. And, and the problem is we have a lot of these on here. Uh, we don't have just a few that we heard tonight. So, so my concern is, is that you know, we have other people who, uh, for whatever reason might be, aren't here tonight. Uh, being charged excessively here, uh, and so I think what we and this is not the first year that we've had these problems with assessments and with contractors and costs and things like that. I, I don't know what the city can do here about in the future uh, with with contractors that you know maybe sometimes they're 
you know, maybe charging too much. Um, if I could just ask a quick question to Matt. Matt, do we know how much money this contractor made for the winter season on everything? Not just these, but the entire snow removal for all properties. The total assessments for snow uh, for 98 properties, we were looking at $32,585 for the snow season. Now in 2008, 2007, the contractor, which was a different contractor, was paid $38,815. But the problem is we don't have all those other, um, let's see. Uh, okay, I guess, yeah, I guess that answers my question. Okay, we've got a motion to approve the snow removal and uh, to make the assessment, to adjust the assessments on 925, 34, and 48. All in favor of that motion? Oh, if I, I'm Go sorry ahead. to interrupt. I, I guess um, that's how much this contractor got for these assessments. Then we also had other properties that he went to or they went to to take care of. It, it, I'm sorry, I'm not understanding that. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to figure out if, the, if there was any other um, money that was made off of this snow removal by this contractor. Not from not from the okay. city that I know of. We, okay. we actually had them do some work for us. When we were shorthanded, they came down and cleared some of the sidewalks downtown. But other okay. than that, we have not paid them any more money out of okay. the uh, parking so, department or okay. the city budget. So okay. we got the motion Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to make one comment. Um, in the seven plus years I've been around Matt, this is the most descriptive and the most um, uh, concise piece of information that we've gotten, and I appreciate your work and your diligence in trying to make this happen. I guess it was, it was pointed out to me that uh, the total assessment at the very end says $16,406. Okay, we've got a... That, you probably are looking at the very end of, those are all the unpaid ones. This is, this would be for all, because approximately half of them have been paid by the citizens. Okay. okay. I, I have a separate sheet. I don't know if you have mm. the sheet. You should have it. No, I don't think I, I think can. it's probably someplace else. It's basically got a, a summary of... Got a the, motion been made and seconded to approve items 1 through 51 with the adjustments on 925-34. All in favor of the motion to approve, vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Blitz? Yes. Staggers? No. Anderson? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jamison? Yes. Motion to approve has been made seven yes, one no. Uh, item 25C. Which is Lincoln County snow removal. <coughs> Anyone wishing to address the council on 25C, that's Lincoln County snow removal for 2008-2009. I see no one that is coming forward, so council. Move to approve. Brown moves. Second, Anderson. Anderson seconds. Further comments? All in favor of the motion to approve item 25C will vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council members Knudsen? Blitz? Yes. Staggers? No. Anderson? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jamison? Yes. That motion has been approved six yes, one excuse, and one no. Item uh, 26A. And that is weed mowing in Minnehaha County. Yes. 25 what? Litter removal. Did we do that already? 25 E. Pardon me. Yes. Uh, when you first uh, did the litter removal, we, we covered both counties. So. Lincoln County was the last page, okay. and there was no change. Got it. Okay. Don Kearney was just here to answer questions again. Mr. Arnie. Um. Oh, I'm sorry. Item 26. My apologies. A resolution approving the special assessment role for the mowing of weeds and grasses in various areas in the city of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Okay. Anyone wish to address the council on uh, item 26A for the weed assessment for 
Items 1 through 126. <laughs> this is weed mowing in Minnehaha County. Well, I see no one that's coming forward, so it's, go ahead. Yeah, I do have a question, though, sure. uh, for Don. It uh, looks like the first four assessments for weed mowing is from the um, directed at the Administrator of Admi uh, Veterans Affairs, Fort Snelling, St. Paul, Minnesota. In reality, are we going to be able to collect from the federal government on this? I'm sorry, what's the question? Yeah, uh, Dwayne, are we going to be able to collect from the federal government on these first four assessments? What will happen okay. on that is the assessment is, is a, a lien on the property. So um, in this case, when the property goes for a resale, uh, the lien will have to be satisfied before the, it can be sold. Okay. That's what the assessment does. It goes on the, the tax roll. Right, but this is a property owned by the federal government, and having a local entity uh, trying to assess the federal government, I, I don't know, in reality, I don't know, maybe we can. I don't know. I'm just curious about that. Uh, I, I, I believe these properties are uh, loan, uh, houses that were guaranteed by VA loans and they were subsequently uh, repossessed and through the process I believe uh, uh, that he's right that when they come up for resale that the liens will have to be paid off before they'd be allowed to sell them. Okay. No one is coming forward so is there any motion on weed mowing for items 1 through 126? Move for approval. Jameson moves. Is there a second? Second. Let's. Let's seconds. Further comments on the motion to approve items 1 through 126 in Weed Boy? Not all in favor of that motion. Vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council members Knudsen? Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. That motion has been approved. Seven yes, one excused. Item 26B. This is Weed Mowing in Lincoln County. Anyone here to speak toward items one through five for Lincoln County weed mowing? I see no one coming forward, so is there council discussion or action? Move for approval, Benninger. Benninger moves. Is there a second? Second. Let's, let's second. Further comments on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion to approve? Vote yes. Those opposed, no. Councilmember Knudsen? Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. That motion has been approved. Seven yes, one excused. Item uh, 27. Item 27 is a resolution approving the special assessment role for repair or demolition of real property in various areas in the city of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Good evening, Ron Bell of Building Services. Uh, what this is proposing to do is to place assessments on certain properties that our Housing Inspection Division has been working with over the last year or more. Uh, we're dealing with six assessments for demolition of everything from single-family dwellings to multi-family multi dwellings, and seven assessments for securing structures. Um, securing structures is happens. Uh, either after a complaint or where we notice that a, a structure has either been broken into the, uh, or is wide open. Um, it, it obviously is a public nuisance for either children or vagrants to get inside the structure, so what we do is we um, send out and hire uh, a contractor that's worked very well with us over, over the past couple of years to go in and actually secure the structure. So uh, this is all based on our International Property Maintenance Code. Uh, we go through the due process that the code requires us to do. Going back through the demolitions, typically we're dealing with notice and orders that have been out there that have been varied from two years to four years where there's been no work done on a piece of property at all. And typically when we, when we get to this point where we're looking at um, notice, notices to demolish, there's also um, notices that are sent out to, for um, making sure that it's secured and, and so forth. So it's, it's a long process, and um, we're just looking for placing the assessments on all these different properties. Questions, Ron, on uh, item 27A. Go ahead. 
Yeah, I guess uh, in taking a look at some of this demolition, we're, I mean, we're talking about big bucks here. Um, $53,368, $33,795, I mean, I wish somebody was here to talk about this because I mean, we just have these numbers in front of us. We, that's all we have. And voting on, I mean, this is, yeah, I, go ahead. I could go through any any property that we did the demolition and go through the numbers. Oh, okay, I guess the 53,000. 53,000. That was the 219 South Colville? Uh, yes. Okay, labor materials to secure the structure to Jeff Taylor Construction for the amount of $64.29 and $108.16. So this was a property where we had to go in and actually secure it um, during the time that it, that it was vacant. There's an asbestos survey. Um, state law requires asbestos surveys and asbestos removals. And, and typically with the, with the asbestos criteria, you're varying somewhere between up, upwards of 20 to 30 percent of these costs. But asbestos survey was $775. In this case, you picked a good one here. The asbestos was $16,000 in, in order to take it out of a four. And this was like a fourplex that was built in the 70s. And th th that number really surprised us that that asbestos was so high. As far as the demolition of the fourplex, that was $23,974.52. And the landfill cost was $12,198.89. Which comes up to your fifty-three thousand dollars. Wow! Do we have a picture of it? This one, I do not have a picture. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, Mr. Stagers. Okay. Further questions? I'd, I'd be I'd be very helpful in describing these properties for Mr. Staggers. The the ones on lot seven and eight up there. That was actually a huge uh, three-story duplex, and then behind that was another duplex that was set up by the alley. And so these, these properties were, they were very large. Yeah. And uh, there was a whole lot of rocks on the property from the railroad right away. There were trees, uh, uh, volunteer trees growing up all over the place. You could barely walk down from the house to the railroad tracks on this here. And I got complaints from uh, people living in that neighborhood uh, over a period of a year wondering when we were going to do it. And in my view, it took entirely too long, but I understand the legal process. Uh, I was in several of these structures. There was dead raccoons, dead cats, furniture had been left there, the water pipes had bust open, and there was mold all over the place, and, and they really needed torn down, Kermit. And uh, so I, uh, this has improved this neighborhood a lot, and I, I know it looks like a lot of money, but they were some very large, old structures. Further comments? I'm just curious. So the only thing that's left is a lot now, correct? Yes. And what's the value of the lot, would you guess? I don't think I'd care to guess. <laughs> I'm going to guess that it's less than 53. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's what we found out that these costs are. You know, it's going to be difficult for somebody to take over a lot with these costs. But on the other hand, you're dealing with structures that are dilapidated. Oh yeah, no, I I, I understand there's their health hazards and that. I just it's interesting the dynamics. Go ahead. If I can just ask also, um, okay, so like on this fifty-three thousand three hundred sixty-eight dollars um, for the assessment, okay. The American Home Mortgage Servicing Incorporated, uh, I don't know, but, okay, if they don't want to pay, um, then, like as mentioned before, we'll put it on the uh, the deed. Mm -hmm. It'll be a lien on the property. A lien on the property, and they just won't try to sell it. Just leave it. Is that quite possible that could happen? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we try to, uh, we must have some sort of contact with these uh, mortgage companies or companies that we can that get them to sign over the property to us so we can at least surplus them and sell them and get them developed? This was the extreme difficulty with this property. We were, we were dealing, our original notice and order was with a property owner who went bankrupt, and the holder of that note went bankrupt. And we're talking about American... Uh, home mortgage, home mortgage, mortgage that has a, a list of subsidiaries that long. We tried and tried in, in order to get in contact with a responsible party from this mortgage company, and it was practically impossible. 
and in the meantime, uh, you had the property further deteriorating um, and also having to come back and secure the structure. It, it just got to the point after three to four years of dealing with a vacant structure, we had to make a move. I imagine that we're going to end up cutting the grass there, cutting the weeds. And then a uh, question for the city attorney, is there a, is there a way to uh, just take, the, take over this property? when? Well, I, I'd have to say that the title is still in the name of someone other than the mortgage company, or have they foreclosed? They foreclosed. It's foreclosed. Bankruptcy. Has there been a foreclosure sale? Not that I know of. See, there's usually a foreclosure sale that you could go bid at. Now, the mortgage company, if it has any value, they have to bid the reasonable value, market value. They can't bid in low. But if you are there and you have a lien, you also have a right to bid on it. But, you know, if it's if there's a $90,000 mortgage debt on it, a $53,000 lien, you have to look at priority. Priority probably go to the mortgage. So you would probably try to contact it. The thing about it is, is you probably have invested $53,000 that you might have to spend X number of dollars to get a clear title to sell whatever the lot is worth. But if you could contact the mortgage company and advise them of this, you know, it also makes it unattractive for them to sell because I don't know if they foreclosed and put the priority of their mortgage. We'd have to look at how the foreclosure went. If we got that, I'd take a look at it. There's a lot of questions I could see that could come up in that. But it looks like if you sell the lot, you could get something out, all you're doing is cutting your losses. And Ron, did you... Did I hear you say that the mortgage company went bankrupt as well? Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. so. so, you know, maybe we sit there. Maybe there could be a quiet title action or something. You know, look at some. Well, that, that's what I'm asking. Is there some way to do it? Otherwise, the city's going to keep incurring yeah. maintenance bills on this. Well, we curve. could foreclose our lien. Have to see. Look at that. You know, I've seen people have foreclosed liens and try to and then see whether or not you can get uh, some sort of a deed on it, but it's not the easiest thing to do. Kenny. I think we should also look at the next one down because it's the same mortgage company and there's, what, four more lots? What's that address? What's that? The lots, uh, let's see, it Two, says 209, 209 11, 13, 15, and 17 what? South Cobo. Isn't that How the same company? Just another thing. You know, if th these people are going bankrupt and no one's there, there's got to be delinquent taxes. True. And that the tax deed could be possibly taken by the county. And so maybe, you know, if you wanted to pay the tax on it, if it wasn't too large, you could get a tax deed and then hold that and then sell a lot later on. If, you know, look at all those options. It's, you know, it might be a great... Re Attorney's retirement. This <laughs> <laughs> just down the road, but see what has to happen. But, um, go ahead. The thing of it is, with this particular mortgage company and the people who own these properties, I've been kind of following it. Uh, it was jury. A lot of these properties were jury leashes, and a lot of you know who jury was. He owned a significant amount of properties around Sioux Falls. Jury kept them together fairly well. Uh, uh, it made them work, but uh, the new owners didn't. And I'm aware of uh, probably six other properties that are in the similar situation, the similar legal limbo as you, as you may, uh, but one of them uh, somebody has purchased here. So I think that something, some kind of movement with this, the company that bought out American Home Mortgage Service, there's some sort of movement there. They're, they're moving on these properties. So I, I guess I'd like to see the city wind up with them. They're in our Pettigrew uh, uh, you know, renewal effort area, and uh, you know, maybe we could do something with the green space on these. I don't know. Maybe some affordable housing could be put on these, but I would like to see the city move forward uh, with trying to obtain these lots. And, and, we'll work on and see, does, does anyone else want to talk on the re repair or demolition of real property in the audience? Okay, come forward. Hello, my name is uh, Greg Haas. I purchased uh, 314 and a half. It was a property that had two houses on it. The main house up by the street was a three bedroom, one bath unit. Uh, the back house in question right now was a one bedroom, one bath. 
And when I went to, I was looking to purchase it, it was uh, foreclosed on by a bank in uh, Colorado. The back house had actually been condemned by the city. It uh, had a clasp on the front door because the front door would not latch. Uh, I want to say two or at least two, possibly three of the windows were broken. They had plywood on them. Um, I decided to purchase the property. I've had the property for about a year and a half now. I originally fixed it up. Uh, it wasn't the worst house on the street, but it was pretty close. I, I pretty much stripped it completely down, um, gutted the kitchen, gutted both the, uh, gutted the bathroom down to the floor joists. Yeah, you can see it there. The, the picture in the back there, that, that addition that has a flat roof on it that you see the window on, the roof was actually collapsing because it was such a bad slope on it. Um, what I did is I tore that addition off and I turned that back house, which was condemned, I turned it into a garage. That front porch on the front house there on the, that you see was the screens were all ripped out. I pulled that out, opened that up. Every window in the, that front house I uh, replaced. I pulled off all the siding, replaced all the siding, put all new shingles on it, replaced the whole kitchen, replaced the full bathroom, moved the laundry room upstairs, added a bathroom and the story and a half because it's a story and a half unit. It's not the best house on the street right now, but it's pretty close. Um, and I now have a a uh, expense for the re for the repair of that back building, which, from my understanding, has squatters and whatnot in it, because of the broken windows and the fact that the front door would not latch. But all of that, all of this bill for ninety-five dollars, was done before I even went to look at the house, let alone purchase it. So I'm, I have, I've listened to people with their snow removal. I've lived in Sioux Falls my whole life. Luckily, I have not had to sit through any of this or be involved in any of this before. Um, so it's been a learning experience, but I'm here to say that it was done by some uh, Tyler Construction, um, but the work was obviously done. For me to be able to even renovate that house, I had to go through the city and get a, my contractor's license. Um, I had to take the test. I had to get the percentile. I had to get a. Um, I had to be licensed and bonded to do all the work. Uh, had I known that something as simple as putting some cart, some uh, plywood and whatnot on the windows, I would have done it myself. Um, that's why I'm here tonight. Um, it was, all the work was done before I even looked at the house, let alone purchased it. Questions? Thank you. Others that wish to address the council on. Repair and demolition of real property for 27A. Not council. Move for approval. Jameson moves. Is there a second? Second, Brown. Brown second. Were there comments on the motion to approve? Go ahead. Yeah, I, I move to delete the $94.90 for uh, Gregory and Don Haas. Second, Costello. Costello, so I guess the motion is to delete uh, 9490 on 0296488. All in favor of that motion, vote yes. Those opposed, no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Menega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. That motion has been approved 8 to 0. We're back to the main motion as amended. Further comments? <laughs> Yeah, I, in thinking about uh, tearing down buildings and so forth, we have the example of Gregory coming tonight and taking some pretty rough property and, and trying to do something with it. I don't know if these other properties that were demolished, whether that was possible or not. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I'm just uh, wondering, um, does this, I guess is this, does the city try to do anything, Ron, to to try to save some of these old buildings? I mean, like you mentioned, they're pretty bad shape, but here we have Gregory trying to do something with, you know, uh, this property on North Franklin Avenue. Uh, do we try to get any other alternative than destroying buildings? Absolutely. 
that the very last thing that we want to do is to demolish a structure. That is by far the last thing that we want to do. Can you tell us what you do then? Well, what, what happened in, in this case, mm -hmm. there was a notice and order that was issued to the previous property owner. And the, and the property was not secured. The, the windows were broken, mm -hmm. and we hired a contractor to go do that. I'm assuming before you had bought the, before he had bought the property. So that, that was out there. What we're doing with this is changing our policy that every time that we have a contractor go out there, we're going to invoice that directly up to finance. So, so that is taken to the Register of Deeds as a pending assessment. So anybody that's going to buy a property would have this information mm -hmm. up front knowing that there's an assessment out there that the city had to go in and actually um, hire a contractor to secure it, to make sure that, that it is a nuisance. But um, i, I got to tell you, Mr. Stagers, that these properties here uh, that we end up having to tear down, they were, I, I, yeah. I don't know how else to say, but they were hopeless properties. Um, they, have, they have been there for so long, and they have, they have had, they have been broken into so many times that I, there is a real fear in that we're talking about children or fires or anything else. Not, not to mention the looks of these properties in neighborhoods. Um, like I say, this is the last, the, the, the last issue that we had is to try to is, is to demolish it. That's the, that's that'd be the last resort. Okay, we've got a motion for us been made and seconded to approve the repair and demolition with the. Uh, Deletion of 9490. Further comments? All in favor of the motion to approve as amended vote yes. Those opposed no. Councilmember Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jamison? Yes. Motion been approved. 8-0 as amended. Item 28. Item 28 is a proposed resolution vacating a portion of the intersection of Southwest Wind Avenue and East West um, East Wood Sedge Street as shown on Exhibit A. Good evening, Chad Hebe with the Engineering Division of Public Works. This right-of-way is improved and is in the Whispering Woods edition, which is east of Southeastern Avenue and south of 57th Street. <coughs> if the right-of-way is vacated, a utility easement will not be maintained, and the petitioner plans to replat these three lots and incorporate the vacated right-of-way within those three lots. Questions to Chad on item number 28, 29. Item 29 is a proposed resolution vacating West 8th Street from North Holly Avenue East to the west property lines of Lot 1B, Block 5, and Lot 1B, Block 6, Inglewood Lake Edition. This portion of 8th Street is unimproved and is between Kiwanis Avenue and Western Avenue. If the right-of-way is vacated, a utility easement will not be maintained and the petitioner plans to build an apartment building on this site. Questions of Chad and item 29. Not, is there a motion at the hearing date for items 28 and 29 for October 13th? I shall move. Can you send moves? Is there a second? Second. second. Let's. Let's seconds. Further comments on motion at the hearing date for October 13th for item 28-29? All in favor, yes. Opposed, no. Council members Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. That motion to set the hearing date for October 13th has been approved 8-0 for item 28-29. Is there a motion to adjourn? So move. Brown. Brown moves. Second? Let's second, Anderson. Let's second it. All in favor? Yes. Those opposed, no. Council Member Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Staggers? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Stand adjourned. <laughs>